Good afternoon and welcome to Rock Springs, Wyoming, as we await the start of a double dip here, girls and boys, the Jackson Bronx and the Rock Spring Tigers. And we'll have all the action for you right here on Jackson Hole Radio, courtesy of Young Life. Young Life Jackson Hole, where they're all about teenagers. Jackson Lumber, Jackson's original board store. The McPeak Group, Jackson Hole's premier real estate team at Sotheby's International Realty and the town square ends of Jackson Hole, including the Antler Inn, Elk Country Inn, Cowboy Village Resort, and 49er Inn and Suites. A beautiful day for basketball, huh? That's played too. Bronx hit the road. They've been enjoying some home cooking for quite a while in Jackson. And this is the first road trip in a little bit. And it's going to be an overnighter. Rock Springs tonight. And we'll be on the air again tomorrow with the Kelly Walsh Jackson Bronx matchup. But right now, let's uh, talk about the game in front of us should be a good one girls set to tap here in a well, about well, the clock says six and a half minutes so they're we're gonna get us started early here we weren't anticipating that and the boys will tap immediately following we were thinking it was gonna be about six might be a little bit earlier We'll take our first break here in the pregame show. Come back and we'll uh, set the scene for you for girls basketball right after these words. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, he, he throws it and he caught it and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes the dynamite. And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. The white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom goes down. Oh, he's going to get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. And the dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh... So is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. You're watching and listening to live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Sports on KZ95. We're back courtside here. In Rock Springs, getting ready for this one between the girls and uh, uh, Coach Sean Shockley's Lady Bronx come into this one. Still looking for that first win of the year, 0-15 on the season, 0-3 in conference, and nursing what we think, if we've done our math correctly, a 32-game losing streak stretching into last year. His team, uh, bottom of the pack at just about everything, offensively averaging 12.5 points a game. That's the conference worst, 16% percent shooting from the field also conference worse they don't shoot the three very well either 13 percent from beyond the arc but all those numbers improving yeah they, so they far are. they're getting better and better each game week after week i, I see some improvement i do, just in their spirit even on the floor yeah defensively they're surrendering 50 half and a, 55 and a half points a game rebounding 23 rebounds a game those are also numbers down towards the bottom now these lady Tigers, uh, you know, the numbers don't wow you. They're 5-10 and ten on the season, 2-2 two and two in conference, but they're much, much better than their record would indicate. They've had a very difficult schedule for one. Number two, for me, they're underachieving. This team last year was very good, and they brought back almost everybody. Ramiro Candelaria, who's been at the helm here since 2015. I'm not sure exactly why this team hasn't played to their potential potential but they're much better than the numbers indicate they're not scoring very much That's averaging just sign. 36 and a half points a game shooting at about 31 percent uh, defensively middle of the pack rebounding is not that great uh, they played last night 
Rock Springs did, so they might might be a little fatigue factor. They won that game against Kelly Walsh, 48-28. The all-time matchup between these two teams favors Rock Springs heavily. The Lady Bronx have not beaten the Lady Tigers in the last 14 tries. Uh, we talked to head coach Sean Shockley first about the Cody game last week. Obviously playing the Cody Phillies. Yikes. Yikes. I mean, that's the best team in the conference. Uh, is there anything good to take away from that? Here's what Coach Shockley had to say about last weekend's game against Cody. Yeah, you, you know, they're, they're the best team right now in, in girls basketball uh, in the state of Wyoming. They should be. I mean, they played last couple state championships and lost them. Uh, the only games they've lost the last couple years have been Cheyenne East for the state championship. Um, they're undefeated this year, and you know they, they're what we need to become in three or four years from now. <laughs> you know, and it won't get there overnight, but uh, you know that that team showed what putting the time in the offseason does. The skills that they have aren't learned during the season. Those are put in out there um, playing in the gym out of season, uh, going to tournaments out of season. A um, bunch of kids have played together, and I know they have. And you know, They're a class active team. You know, Their kids didn't talk trash. They just stuck it to us. You know, um, They played hard the whole time, but there wasn't like belittling us or anything else like yeah. some of the teams do. You know, They didn't need to do some of the things, but they only did what the coach asked them to do and they played hard and you know it's just a good team yeah it's the cody phillies by the way the final score in that game cody 81 jackson 12 cody's been whipping up on everybody and it, you know for the girls it was a chance to see the dream to set your sights high there's no higher than cody it's like it's like a minor league team playing the new york yankees my my favorite you know you get to see a team that wow you just look at them and you say wow we want to be them yeah and you shared a court with them last weekend you were kind of blown off off the floor but at least you got a head uh, a front seat view of of the Cody Phillies I thought maybe the best thing for the girls right now is to get on a bus and get out of Jackson get away from the distractions hit the road and sort of buckle down and and see if you can become a little closer of a team here's what coach Shockley uh, Shockley had to say about hitting the road you know the biggest thing is we get to spend time together you know we get on the bus it's just us you're right we get to have conversations we get to um, pick each other up up. You know, we get to get to know each other a little bit better. And you know, every time we're together, I think kids learn to care about each other more. You know, and so we get the tighter the bond is, the more you know, fight together for a common cause as opposed to be fragmented within. Um, and so that part's always good for us. It, we do feel less pressure on the road. We do. I mean, it's, you know, we don't want to struggle. We don't. Uh, we want to make shots. We don't want to miss them. You know, and at home, we do feel a team bit more pressure, as, as I do as a coach. You know, it's, it's we're all in the together but um you know we won't get a chance to relax today this rock springs team is out there they're playing well they beat and uh you know they're a much improved basketball team so it's you know we have to come out and be ready because all these teams jake are going to come out and press us try to pu punch us in the mouth put us down for the count and let the basket get big and watch shots go in you know and so we have to compete but you know early play hard limit the second chances uh they get and and see if we can't turn the game out yeah, it's going to be a tough opponent, these uh, Lady Tigers here in Rock Springs. It's going to be a tough ask for these Lady Bronx. Let's have Jackson girls introduce themselves. It's the Young Life Jackson Hole starting. Hi, I'm Ashley Chamberlain, a freshman. Hi, I'm Ashley Chamberlain, a sophomore. Hi, I'm Naomi Roper, and I'm a senior. My name is Jim Young Garcia, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Zoe Bosch, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Allison Birchup, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Marlo Strickland, freshman. Hi, my name is Sofia vasquez Baez, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Lucy Webb, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Sierra Johnson, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Raina Rose, and I'm a senior. Hi, I'm Mads Holland, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Hayden Block, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Trinity Green, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Kat Inky, and I'm a sophomore. Well, if that sounded like a lot of youngsters and underclassmen introducing themselves, it was. This is a very young Lady Bronx team. Is we take you courtside now. Both team introductions going on. Starting lineup for the Lady Bronx. Looks like they'll go with Naomi Roper. Zoe Bosch. Lucy Webb. 
Holland and Cassidy. Is that Sierra? Sierra Johnson, yeah, for yep, the okay. Rock Springs. It'll be Emma Essay. The 5'11 sophomore averaging nine and a half points. It'll be Ashley Anderson, the senior. She's their triple threat, loves to shoot it from beyond the arc, averaging five points on the season. Uh, I saw number 20, Cassidy Webb. Sydney Harris, the six foot junior. A good size, by the way, to this Rock Springs team. And who else did you see out there, Harris? Uh, Webb, Cassidy Webb. Oh, Cassidy Webb, the 5'6 junior. Okay, we do have an injury update. One of the, one girl from uh, Rock Springs is unable to go. Jackson wins the tap, and we're underway here in the early going. Good to have you along with us. Yeah, we got an early start here in Rock Springs as the Lady Bronx, Lady Tigers battle it out. It'll be a travel on Mads Holland's first turnover of the game for Jackson. It'll be Rock Springs ball. No score just underway here at Rock Springs. The Lady Tigers in their home whites trimmed in orange. Jackson in their traveling grays trimmed in orange and black. And it's Essay with the ball now works it to Ella Brewster. Brewster, one of the stars on this team last year, has not put up the numbers she did last year so far this year, but she is trouble inside. Beautiful pass inside to Sydney Harris, who converts. And that was Brewster who made a nice backhand pass inside. And it's 2 0 and the foul as well for a chance to make it a three point play. That's going to be on. 33. There is no 33. I'm not sure who they're Ooh. thinking that's on, but the free throw not made. However, Rock Springs with the rebound. That's Ella Brewster pulled it down. Now, S.A., her shot, a three-pointer, no good. Rebound, Mads Holland. Jackson ball, they're down 2 nothing. Just barely a minute into this. Lucy Webb with it here on the near elbow. Bounce pass to Sierra Johnson. Works it inside to Roper. Back to Johnson. Sierra kicks it out to the near elbow to Lucy Webb. Her pass partially deflected and now taken away. Oh, Emma S.A. almost went the other way with this, but Jackson gets it back. Good drive down oh. the lane there by... Oh. Zoe Bosch, and then she misses a shot, and Jackson will turn it over. So 6.47 to go in the first, just underway. Rock Springs ball. It's Ella Brewster with it now, guarded by Naomi Roper. Works it far side to Ashley Anderson. Now Brewster has it back. Brewster hands off to S.A. She'll try a 20-footer. That comes up short. Rebound, though, by... Sydney Harris, her rebound is short as well, and then a foul on Harris herself. That'll be her first team first. Jackson ball. Zoe Bosch will inbounds. Zoe looking around, full court pressure here. We thought we'd see some of that from Rock Springs. Jackson oh. almost breaks it, but not quite. Stolen away. Emmy Essay, Emma Essay puts it up, but misses the easy layup, but she is knocked hard to the floor. And the foul on Zoe Bosch, her first team second. Essay to the line, the 5'11 sophomore, averaging 51% free throw shooter. She makes that one, and it's 3 0 Rock Springs. Tough place to come and play here in Rock Springs and a very good crowd for this early in a Friday. Second shot is too short. Roper over the rebound for Jackson. Oh. Naomi Roper has it stolen away by S.A. Hands off to Brewster and now a shot up. Uh, no good by Ashley Anderson. Good rebound there from Mads Holland. And one of the keys of the game we never did get to is box out. This Rock Springs team has two girls at 5'11". So it's up to Mads Holland as she's going to get rebounds to box out, create her own space in the paint. Here's Zoe Bosch, pulls up a dribble. She's in trouble, but finds Roper. She'll try a long three. That's oh. off the mark, wide right. And the rebound, Ashley Anderson brings it up for Rock Springs. Roper watches her, hands off to Brewster. Now kicks it out to Esse. Emma Esse, hands off, back to Anderson. Pump fake, now works it far elbow. Good lane drive there, up and in. That's Cassidy Webb, the junior. And that was a 
nice move to the rack to make it 5 nothing. Naomi Roper in trouble here and a jump ball. No, they're oh. going to get her for travel. Well, she was tied up with Cassidy she Webb. She was tied up. I, I watched some of that during some earlier games and the, here. Yeah, the two were wrestling over that ball. And in the wrestling match, Naomi took steps. Can't do that. So Rock Springs ball inside to Sydney Harris. Back outside, long NBA three is good. That's Ella Brewster. And boy, they ought to give you four from where she shot that from. It's eight nothing Rock Springs. Zoe Bosch to Lucy Webb. Webb just under five to go with the first. Webb pulls up her dribble, finds a cutting Bosch in the oh. lane. Left-handed layer, no good. Gets her own rebound. And that shot won't go, but she's fouled, and she'll head to the line. Good job by Zoe Bosch. She's not terribly big, the freshman, but leads this team in scoring at 3.6, and she was in there in no man's land. You got Brewster at 5'11", Essa at 5'11", and... Bosch, who makes the first free throw to make it eight to one. She just rolled right down the paint. Mm -hmm. Fearless drive. Here's her second as Raina Rhodes checks in for Naomi Roper. Second shot coming here. Another substitution. We get our coming out of Sydney Harris. I didn't see who rolled in for. Oh, that's Bryn Bider, oh, yeah. the 5'9 sophomore. Second shot coming up for Bosch. She's been very methodical about it. It's up and no, but a lane violation. Uh, Jackson wouldn't have counted anyway, and Rock Springs ball with 4.50 to go in the opening frame. Lady Tigers, who played last night against Kelly Walsh, a 20-point win, playing back-to-back. Rock Springs with the ball. Drive there is shut off. Cassidy Webb, she's on the floor. Wide open baseline three. No good from Ashley Anderson. Rebound Holland, or Johnson rather, tied up with Emma Essay. And did they jump it and give us the arrow, it looks like? Yeah. Full court press again for Rock Springs. Lucy Webb with it now. Works it ahead to Zoe Bosch across the timeline. Two on one developing. Bosch will post up. 14 footer, no good. Rebound Mads Hollins, but it's stolen away from her by Ashley Anderson. Or by Cassidy Webb, sorry. Bryn Bider with it now. Gets a screen. Thought about her shot. Won't take it. And now reset Ella Brewster. She plays a lot on the perimeter. 5'11 junior, but you see her way out here on the perimeter. Emma Essa hands off to Cassidy Webb. Webb to Brewster. Far side biter. Nice fake. Tries the lane. Kick out. Wide open three again from Anderson. And she's got that one. And that was good ball movement and a nice job to kick it out to Anderson, who did not miss. 11 to 1 now. Rock Springs. Jackson ball. Lucy Webb brings it down the right side. She's in trouble right in. Right in front of the dance team over there, but manages to find Zoe Bosch, who gets it to Johnson, who works it to Webb up and in. That was nice ball movement by Jackson. Beautiful. Very pretty. And Lucy Webb finished it up to make it 11 to 3. Rock Springs with it now. Ashley Anderson, the 5'7 senior, guarded closely by Webb. Now works it into Ella Brewster. Brewster's triple team lost the handle, but it Bider is going to help her out. Br Bryn Bider with a baseline drive. Too short. Rebound Ella Brewster, but she was fouled, I believe. And Brewster looks like she'll make a trip to the line. The foul's on Mads Hollins, her second in a hurry here. And Coach Sean Shockley, Sean Shockley wants a timeout, and he usually calls these, calls these early timeouts, try to chill things out a little bit. Yeah, our keys to the game, I'll put those up now for you. But one of them was box out. You're playing a team that's pretty lengthy, two girls at 5'11". So you got to try to box out. Weather the early pressure, you know, playing at home, these Rock Spring Lady Tigers are going to be all keyed up. Full court pressure. Once you show Rock Springs, you can deal with that full court pressure. They may lay off and then block out the crowd. This is a good crowd on hand. We got a dance team, a cheer squad, uh, and stands that are nearly full already here. Yeah, it looks like they had all their younger lady basketball players here as well. So all of those younger teams are in the audience right now. Yeah. 
from the line. First free throw is made by S.A. Make it 12-3, and she hits both of them. It's now 13-3, 10-point lead. Three minutes to go with the first, and Rock Springs does indeed back off that pressure. And Zoe Bosch brings it across the line, picked up by Emma S.A. Near side pass intended for Lucy Webb. That's tipped by Ashley Anderson and out of bounds into the scorer's table. It hit the uh, PA announcer and he had his mic off, thankfully. Hit him right in the mic. <laughs> he held the mic up to stop the ball. Here's Webb. She's in a little trouble now. Needs help. It's tapped away. Now you can dribble oh. again, but eh, the ball's stolen away. Ella Brewster with it now. Brewster working on Webb. Shot. No good. Webb blocked it, but the rebound is made. I think it was Anderson. I'm not sure, but good job by Lucy Webb to get down there and block that shot from Brewster, and she's given away almost a foot in size there. Jackson with the ball. Zoe Bosch to Johnson to Webb. Now out here to Bosch again. Double team. She's in a trap, but gets it out to Rainer Road. She'll try a 16 or a 20-footer. That's no good, but a nice board there by Johnson, who leads Jackson in rebounds, but it's stolen away. Rock Springs with it. Anderson kicks it near elbow here to Cassidy Webb. Now top of the key. Reset. Ella Brewster will calm things down and direct traffic. Raina Rhodes comes out to meet her between the circles. Spider. Spider tries the lane. Kick over to Brewster. Now to Anderson along three. Good. And look out. Ashley Anderson is heated up. And she is their three-point threat. She's the best triple shooter on the Rock Springs Lady Tigers. And they've... Made a 15-point game out of this here. Lucy Webb, bounce pass inside. She wanted to find Mads Hollins, but that never got there. Stolen away, Rock Springs ball. Anderson bringing it up, the senior. Average is five a game. She's just about there now. Well, she's past that now. Anderson will try another three. This one's short. Holland with a rebound, and she got poked from behind by Bider, who picks up her first foul, team third. Jackson will retain possession. Zoe Bosch with it. Substitution. Roper's in for Webb for the Jackson Lady Bronx. No full court pressure. Again, Rock Springs backs off. Minute five to go in the first. Jackson down 18-3. So whether the early storm hasn't happened yet. Sierra Johnson, nice oh. pass inside a Roper. Her shot is blocked, but she'll draw the foul. Beautiful pass. Sierra Johnson to Naomi Roper who might be 5'3". Her baseline layup was blocked, but she'll go to the line. She's a 14% free throw shooter, so she's in Anna Han Andrew Hanna territory, but she does make that one. <laughs> Let's go with 100% tonight. Yeah, How's that? all right. 18 to 4 now, 55 seconds to go. Roper on her second, takes a look at it, fires, and she's off with this one. Rebound Rock Springs, it's Cassidy Webb. Hands off to Anderson, who has hit a couple trays already. She works it into Ella Brewster. Brewster inside a biter up and in and the foul. Bryn Biter. I think it's on Bosch. Zoe Bosch, you think, is the guilty party. Biter, the sophomore. Yep, ooh, that's her second too. Couple early fouls for Jackson. We'll see if Bider can make it a three-point play, and she does. And it's 21 to four now with 40 seconds. Jackson ball, Roper will inbounds. Coach Shockley making a substitution, pulls Bosch for, can't see who the new player is. Lucy Rose. Webb. Okay, Lucy Webb. Lucy came back in. Webb with it now. Works it to Roper in the near elbow. Back to Webb. Lucy Webb walks it back to the top of the key. Pulls up her dribble. And gives it back to Naomi Roper. Roper puts a move on Anderson. Now coming over to steal it is Cassidy Webb. And is a tie up for oh. it. And another travel. And again, I don't know how that's not a jump ball. You got three girls with hands on it. And they'll call the travel. Who traveled then? Who has possession? Nobody had possession of that ball. Around the horn 
goes the passing here. Anderson, oh, her pass nice. stolen away. Lucy Webb got a hand in there and took it away from Anderson. Last second try from Raina Rhodes is too short, and that's how the first quarter will end. After the first eight minutes, it's Rock Springs 21, Jackson 4. We'll be back with the second quarter here in Rock Springs. You're enjoying Bronx basketball and home of the Bronx Jackson Hole Radio Network. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more in Info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. Let's get back to the live action on KZ95. Here's Jake Nichols. Back to Rock Springs, festive atmosphere here at the Rock Springs yeah. High School. They got a lot of a lot of kids have turned out. They must have told them that they don't have to go to school tomorrow if they come to the game tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how that works? Okay. Yeah, it fakes out fakes out kids every time. It gets the underclassmen every time. I don't know, but they got a good crowd in the stands. Good cheer, good cheerleader squad. It looks like Tony the Tiger over there too. They got a mascot. The Tiger. We're not sure if that's Tony, but it is a Tiger. It does look like Tony to me. Jackson sends out Rhodes, Webb, Johnson, Roper, and Holland. Rock Springs looks like they have their starting five out. Anderson floats a pass in the lane to Essa. She puts up a shot, no good. Boy, you can do that when you got Emma Essa at 5'11". You can just sort of float a pass in there, and she's going to get it almost every time. Not sure what that whistle was. Anderson looking to inbounds here. Fires one out to Webb. Believe the ball went out of bounds. Ella Brewster with it now to Anderson. Ashley Anderson walks it all the way to the near side elbow. Now passes inside to Essay, whose left-handed hook shot is no good. Rebound Jackson. Here's Lucy Webb with it now. Jackson trail 21-4. Roper with it right in front of the Rock Springs bench. Naomi Roper gets it to Raina Rhodes. Rhodes walks it to the right side. And now kick out on the right elbow to Webb. Lucy Webb in trouble with being guarded by Emma Essay. She gets it to Raina Rhodes. Rhodes lost the handle. And up with it is to save her is Holland. And now her pass knocked out of bounds. That's off Biter, I believe. So Jackson should retain possession here. I believe Bryn Bider was last to touch it. And yes, inbounds is Webb. We are a little ways away from the court. It's hard for me to <laughs> see these numbers. Oh, the pass. Uh, Webb was looking to get it cross court and hit the bottom of the oh, basket. Man. So that's out of bounds. You can't do that. You have your glasses on, don't you? I do. That's the scary part. Still can't see. I'll just call it by feel. Here's Anderson with it now for Rock Springs. Hands off to Biter. Bren Biter working top of the key to Webb. Cassidy Webb got Holl uh, Sierra Johnson on her. Now gives it to S.A. And she double palmed dribble. it. Yeah, a little double dribble deal there. That didn't look right. Haven't seen that in a while, a double dribble. Yeah. Jackson basketball. 6.45 to go in the half. Jackson down 21-4. Rhodes works it far side to Ooh. Lucy Webb. Back to Rhodes. Back to Naomi Roper. Roper walks it to in between the circles. Ball poked away momentarily. Now a scramble for it on the floor. Roper comes up with it to Raina Rhodes. Jackson has numbers. Rhodes tries a three. Good. Raina Rhodes. Now that'll teach Rock Springs to... Try to be too aggressive with the turnover. The Lady Tigers are all headed the other oh. way. And there's a foul as Emma Acey is knocked to the ground. And that's going to be on Lucy Webb. I think Emma really tripped over Lucy. Both, yeah. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they got tangled up a little bit. They're going to call it on Webb. Roper comes out for Coach Shockley. And substitution. Mads Holland's really battling with Emmett. 
essay away from the ball, and now the ref blows a whistle and tells those two to chill out. <laughs> He doesn't call anything, but those two were really pushing on each other. And now Rock Springs will inbounds. Ella Brewster with it. Brewster, just a junior. This team's still young, as good as they were last year. They were all sophomores. And now they're having a little bit of a junior slump. They always call it the sophomore slump. It's kind of a junior slump for this team. S.A., although as a sophomore, but Brewster, the junior. Kaylee Lionberger, who we haven't seen yet, is another very good junior. And Sydney Harris, all juniors from a team that was good, really good last year. Here's Brewster. She'll try a long three. That's off the mark. Oh. Rebound, Rhodes lost the handle. Uh, that shot no good, but Rhodes, I think, is going to get whistled for a foul. It'll send Brewster to the line. And it is Rana Rhodes. And... Well, now there's, yeah, that's Rhodes. Her first team is sixth. To the line is Emma Essay, and she missed that. Football score here, 21-7, 537 to go in the half. Brewster will try, or Essay will try again here. She's a 51% free throw shooter, missed them both. Good rebound there from Sierra Johnson, who leads the Lady Bronx in boards. Stolen away as Kat Ankeny's pass was picked off. Here comes Rock Springs the other way. Ella Brewster's shot no good. Fight for it is Emma Essay, along with Sierra Johnson, and they'll finally call a jump ball. And it'll be Jackson Ball. Raina Rhodes inbounds to Lucy Webb. Game getting a little bit physical here. And you got to believe some of that is Coach Shockley girls kind of tired of losing at this point. Ball poked away from Kat Ankeny. Last off the hands of Essay, I believe. So Jackson Ball. Mads Hollins checks in for Kat Ankeny. And Rhodes will inbounds right in front of the Rock Springs bench. Her pass goes off somebody's foot. It'll still be Jackson Ball. I think Anderson kicked at that. They'll just change the spot where Rhodes will inbounds. She looks around, and again, her pass knocked away, intended for Rommel. But, boy, Rock Springs playing some very tight defense here. They're in a very tight man-to-man. -man. Just can't find anybody open. There's Webb open for a moment. And now bounce pass into Rommel. She'll take a shot. No good. Off, or Sorry, that was Mads Hollins. Just missed off the rim. And with five to go in the half, Rock Springs ball. Near side elbow. It's Ashley Anderson. She's been in all the way there. She's hit a couple from distance. Gives it to Bryn Bider. Bider back to Ella Brewster. Brewster far side Anderson. Anderson gets a nice screen from one of her teammates. Can't make any use of it. Cassidy Webb inside. Nice pass to Emma AC who finishes up. And it's 23-7. Good ball movement by Rock Springs. Jackson was doing a good job defending. He just he can't do it forever. Finally, they found Essay inside for the easy layup. Oh, Rommel's pass almost off the mark. Now it is stolen away. Anderson, she's one on two. Is she going to try it? No. She'll pull up. Ashley Anderson gives it to Cassidy Webb. Top of the key to S.A. And now Brewster, who is that calming influence, the junior, always settling things down. Here's Biter. She drives the lane, picks up a triple team, kicks it out. Baseline three is good. Emma S.A. That's exactly how you do it. You drive the lane, you draw a crowd, and you kick out to whoever was open that time it was SA who drained the three and it's 26 7 that pass picked off Lucy Webb not sure who she was looking for two on one fast break rock spring shot no good the layup by SA did not go but she'll go to the line and she's been there a bunch already 21. seventh foul on Jackson and the second on Lucy Webb Essay missed her last two, but she's a 51% free throw. Should have missed that. So Emma not quite feeling it from the charity stripe. Substitutions for Jackson. Zoe Bosch back in. She's got that right knee wrapped. Does she always do that? Mm, yeah, she did. Yeah. Yeah, she has. Or at least the last couple of games she's had it. You got Rhodes, Rommel, 
Ankeny, Holland, and Bosch. And both missed by Essa. Jackson ball, here comes Zoe Bosch looking to push the pace. Zoe drives the lane, her shot no good, but she will draw the foul. That's one good thing about going to the rack is you will often pick up a foul, and she did. Jackson does not go to the line near enough, these girls, and it's because they just don't take enough shots, period, but they don't take enough like that, like driving to the cylinder. Oh. Zoe just misses that shot with three and a half minutes to go in the half. Jackson trailing 26-7, and Bosch would love to be able to cut that lead at least by one. Zoe, a 54% free throw shooter. That's best on the Bronx. Second one is good, and it's 26-8. Rock Springs ball, and we get our first look at Janessa Hansen and Carly Nandrup both in the game. Here's Hansen with it now. She'll try a three. Rhodes comes out to challenge. Shots no good. Mads Hollins with the board. Good job by Holland to pull that down. And here comes Jackson with the ball now. One and done for Rock Springs. That's a good sign. Look out. Bosch almost walked with it. Gets it to Holland. Rhodes baseline three far side. Oh. No good. Too strong. Rebound picked up by Sydney Harris. No, that was Janessa Hansen, the junior, and in Rock Hansen. Springs ball. Well, maybe it was Harris. She's out there as well. Hansen and Harris. Nice drive to the lane up and in. Janessa Hansen, the junior, averages 1.2 points a game, but that looked pretty. And with their two bigs out, Brewster and Essay, it's Hansen oh. and Harris doing the damage now for Rock Springs. Jackson with the ball. And that far side, Bosch is in big, Ooh. big trouble. And no, sorry, that's Rommel, Harley yeah. Rommel. And did she take too long trying to do something she with did. it? She did. I wish you had noticed there's a couple of girls that looked open. Oh, yeah. 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 But when you got hands all over you, you, you don't notice try that. Yeah. Again, Coach Shockley says, come to the ball, tells his girls, go help the ball carrier. You may th you may be open indeed, but if you're across the court, there's little chance you're going to get that pass. Go to the ball. Here's Bryn Bider with it now. Rock Springs working it around the horn. Harris works it to Hanson. Her drive, bam! She just runs right into Cat Ankeny and hits the deck. And we'll see what they call. I'm thinking Ooh, Cat's going to. No, I think they. Oh no, that, it's the block and it's Bosch. Who, it's her third too. And see where she came from. It looked like the collision was with Ankeny. To the line is Hanson, and she is off the mark with that one. Okay. Rebound Roper, good job, Jackson Ball. Lucy Webb across the line, two minutes to go in the first half. It's been all Rock Springs. Near side, Cat Ankeny, watched by Harris. Wanted a bounce pass to Roper, thinks better of it. Now works at top of the key, Bertram. Allison Bertram turns around, kick out to Lucy Webb. Webb far side to Zoe. She tried a little something, but didn't like it. Carly Nandrup, or Bryn Biter, is right with her. Now, good drive by Lucy by uh, Zoe Bosch. Puts up the shot, it's no good, but she'll go to the line. She was fouled. She kind of shook her hand like she was hit on the hand, and I guess she was. It's going to be Bryn Bider, her second, team seventh, in a foul-filled first half. So his first one is just short. Jackson down. Never been in the lead in this one. 28-8, down by 20. Zoe Bosch has been to the line a bunch already. Takes a look. Her second shot is good. Rock Springs ball is Bosch comes out, replaced by Rhodes. Jackson, a man defense all the way. Near side, Carly Nandrup works it into Harris. Sydney Harris, no good, but gets her own rebound up and in. Sydney Harris, six foot. We talked about the two 5'11 girls. Forgot about Sydney Harris, six foot junior, and there's just nobody on Jackson that could contend with that kind of length. Ankeny, her pass intended for Roper is knocked out of bounds. That's last off Sydney Harris. I feel like that would be me playing basketball against you. Yeah, Harris does not look six foot to me. I'm looking at her. She doesn't look taller than Brewster and Essay, but that's what they have. There's Raina Rhodes with it now. Works it to Naomi Roper. 
Roper working on Hanson man on man. Roper, nice dribble, kicks it out to Lucy Webb. Lucy Webb thought about a shot, works it near side. Allison Birch and pump fake. Thought she was going to take a shot, but she gets in a little bit of trouble there. Works it to Webb. Lucy Webb on the near elbow, top of the key to Raina Rhodes. Rhodes puts a move on Bryn Bider, pulls up her dribble and kicks it back out. Lucy Webb, not much going on in the interior. Jackson can't find much. There's a reach in, I believe, on Kaylee Lyonberg and the first we've seen of her. Lionberger's brother plays on the varsity team. He's a pretty good baller. This Lionberger family, pretty athletic. Kaylee Lionberger, the junior, that's her first foul in team eighth. It'll send Lucy Webb to the line, a 38% free throw shooter. Webb eyes it, fires it. And it's off the back of the iron, no good. Rebound Carly Nandrup for Rock Springs. 30 to nine, down to the last 30 seconds in the first half. Hanson with it now. Works it all the way far side, drive, and another collision. Lucy Webb goes down, and we're gonna call it a charge. Carly Nandrup, 5'6", junior, just put a lower the shoulder into Webb, who's gonna come out now. She looks okay, but that was a shot, and Lucy, yeah, I'm watching her face. She's definitely not happy with it. Raina Rhodes with it now. Rock Springs can be physical, but these Lady Bronx better get ready for that because the Lady Trojans are very physical. We'll see them tomorrow. Here's Ankeny with it. Cat Ankeny time running out. Seven oh. seconds. Her pass behind the back. Oh, yeah. Allison Bertram was going one way, and the pass went the other. And with 5.7 seconds, the Lady Tigers will play for a last shot here to end the half. Hanson Bertram. Brings it up, Janessa Hansen fires a long three, no good, and that's how the half will end. The score after two quarters of play, Rock Springs 30, Jackson 9. We'll be right back with a halftime show on the home of the Bronx, Jackson Hole Radio Network. Jackson Lumber, the board store, Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available. With names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine, and DeWalt. Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Grovant. Call 733-6000, 733-6000. Experience Jackson Hole like a local while staying at the Antler Inn, Elk Country Inn, Cowboy Village Resort, or 49er Inn and Suites. With the best entertainment, dining, shopping, bars, and brews all in walking distance, you'll never want to leave. Call 1-800-4-TETONS or find them on the web at townsquareinns.com. This is KZ95 with live coverage of the Jackson Bronx. to the action here in Rock Spring. Boy, it's loud in here, huh? It's loud. Uh, that band. Band is loud. It's a pretty fun atmosphere in Rock Springs. There's some more, like, cheer Ooh. girls. No, this Ooh. is the dance team. That was just the oh, cheerleaders that were out there, the cheer squad. Now I'll this is you, the they, dance team. They got team. no shortage of girls with pom-poms in Rock Springs. They must have 80 of them out there, and I'm not <laughs> exaggerating. <laughs> Count them. There's not 80. It's got to be about 80. Maybe half of that. Well, they're doing their routine. If you're watching us, hopefully you're on the... You're catching us on our YouTube channel. And by the way, not terribly appreciated, appreciative of the early start by Rock Springs. I know when you're an AD and you've got yeah, a yeah. freshman game, a JV, you got a whole bunch of games, and all of a sudden you find yourself somehow ahead of schedule. You get so excited. You're like, oh, thank goodness we're not behind. So you just start a game. But, you know, they, they just, I don't know if anybody's thinking about broadcast teams. We're not the I, only ones. I know, right, right or when you think about, yeah, at least varsity. You want to, you want varsity to start on time, at least a girls' game. Yeah, I mean, we we've got a time when we're promised to be on the air, and all of a sudden the game starts early. So if you joined us late, you weren't really late. We were early, and both uh, we and.
and the Home Rock Springs broadcast crew. We're scrambling to hurry up and get our signal going and get this game on the air for you. But yes, we're at halftime with the Lady Tigers 30, the Lady Bronx 9. It's been all Rock Springs. We thought it might be. Rock Springs, I don't know how they have managed to have a 5-10 and 10 record on the season. I watched this team on film. I watched them last year. They're just too good. They're, they're better than 5-10. and 10. Coach Ramiro Candelaria, who's been doing this since 2015 with the girls, always has his team ready to play. They just had a really tough schedule so far this year and maybe underachieving a little bit, or maybe uh, they're saving it for the right time. They're peaking now into the yeah, postseason. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. So. Well, we got another performance. Now it's all a bunch of flag people. Seriously, this is 100. This is, the, this is part of the band, and... But uh, we used to call it drill team, but I think they called it something else. I'm, I'm, I'm just jealous at all the student excitement. They got dance squad, cheer teams, flag people. I mean, a full band up there. Full band going. This is Friday night in Sweetwater County. Look out. Fun stuff. Boys coming up here in just a bit. Let's... Uh, Maybe a visit with Coach Shockley one more time while we're here. We don't have any stats, so we might as well talk to Coach Shockley. We had a little pregame interview with Coach, and he was talking about the road trip and Rock Springs. I mean, he knew Rock Springs would be a tough, tough team to play. Kelly Walsh, a little bit easier of a team. Jackson girls match up a little bit better with the Kelly Walsh girls. Although Kelly Walsh, I watched them play. They're very physical teams, so you better bring it uh, you better get out of bed early if you're the Jackson Lady Bronx <laughs> and be ready to go uh, eat your Wheaties because the Trojans can be physical but a game that possible uh, Jackson girls may be able to do some things in uh, this is what coach Shockley had to say about the Lady Trojans do you guys see this again today with Rock Springs and Kelly Walsh tomorrow it's their length uh, um, when they get into us, we are such a small team that if we cannot get our, our front shoulder through and keep our back hip between the, our, our body between the basketball and the defender, the length gets so many steals on the ball just by deflections and taking it from us. We work hard on that all the time. You know, we put Coach Johnson, who's 6'4", and Coach Bosch is 6'1", and they go out there and they D up the basketball pretty hard and work on getting those passing angles, but we get sped up. And they're, you know, and that's that's the hardest part for us is uh, when we go and look at Kelly Walsh, they're big. They're and a bunch they're of physical. They, they play are. hard. They are, and, and they're not as bad as their record shows either. They just don't put the ball in the hoop much either. But you know, it, it, that's like I said. What happens again to us is we play well for a while. And then you look up there, we're still at four points, and they're at 12. Then they're at 16. And okay, now we got to five. You know, and then they're yeah. up to 19 or 20. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're shooting without a conscience. So it doesn't matter. They yeah. can relax, you know, and just keep firing it up there. And, and the basket gets big. And those, you know, we, we haven't played to what the scores reflect. I mean, every, every coach that comes afterwards says, you know what, you're a lot better in person than you are when you watch the game and see the film. Yeah. So we just don't realize. You, Score, you guys don't score. <laughs> you know, going, you're right. We play hard. We try to do all the little things, but you know, we're waiting for that day to come. And all of a sudden, somebody's hot, and we make three or four shots in a game, and somebody else feeds off of that, and they hit one or two. And gosh, yeah. we, you know, I guess we got to get to 20 before we get to 30. <laughs> but I, I keep hoping yeah. that we will, you know, bust loose and and, and look at us. You know, so it wasn't that hard. <laughs> Yeah, Coach Shockley brings up a couple of good points. Yes. One is the ability of the Lady Bronx opponents to play loose. When you jump out to an early lead, like these Rock Spring yeah. Lady Tigers have, all of a sudden there's no pressure on your shots. Imagine the pressure on the Lady Bronx. Every basket means huge for a team that scores, you know, 17 at the most. And when you're Rock Springs, if you can build a lead like this and it's 30 to 9, 
thing, by the way, at the half, all of a sudden, as he said, the basket looks bigger and all, and yep. you just, you can shoot free and easy, and boy, it's a lot better to shoot when you're relaxed. And the other thing he brought up is, is length. This Lady Bronx team has no one with any size, and not only does height matter in rebounding and stuff like that around the net, but it matters when you're being guarded by a girl who's taller than you. She and can reach around you. Right, and you're trying to make a shot yeah, of, and like, then, like, you're like, she just got to stand there, and you, yeah. you, you got to work hard to get it over top of her. Yeah, I, I mean. It's hard, yeah. When you're, you know, say 5'3", and you got a girl 5'11", guarding you, they, they, they can just reach around. So what they've been working on it, it, in practice is shielding the ball, turning their back to the defender and trying to keep the ball hidden uh, and shielded from the defender a little bit. And you see the girls are picking up on that. They're doing that more and more, and they're doing it better and better each time out. All the numbers trending up, and I think we'll see a much improved game out of the girls tomorrow. I think that'll be a fun game against Kelly Walsh. Same thing as Coach said, too. I want to see them break 20 for yeah. them. Yeah. I mean, we've, oh, we were so close last weekend. So close. Yeah, you look so at the close. girls' finals. They did score 20 in their very first game of the year against South in that early, early season tournament in December. It's almost seems like a lifetime away. They never have equaled that. 17. No, uh, they hit 18. 17 three times. They hit 18 against Evanston, but they also have uh, three stinkers in there where they scored just five points three times. So, yeah, I mean. You need more offense. You need more everything if you're the Lady Bronx. We're just about a minute away from getting this again, second half rolling. Again, I'll have to agree, like what, you know, Coach said. Like, the scoreboard does not reflect what these ladies are actually given out there on the court. And I, like you said, they keep improving week after week. Yeah. And that's growing and learning is what life's all about, right? Uh, couches, yep, coaches use words like teachable. This is certainly a teachable group and fun to coach, he said. Says. They're fun to watch, kind of like all the Lady Bronx have been over the last yeah. few years, because you appreciate a team that gives it all. And it's obvious when you watch them that they don't leave anything out there. I mean, they they keep coming at you. They give all they got, and that's all you can ask right now. We're ready to go here. The second half would be Rock Springs ball, far side of the court, inbounds coming from. Ashley Anderson. It looks like Coach Candelari has put out his starting five and. Boy, they're as good as we've seen all year. It, they got tons of height, tons of talent, and nobody other than Ashley Anderson's a senior. This team really impresses me. They're much better than 5 and 10, I'm telling you. Anderson with it now for Rock Springs. Kick out to Sydney Harris. Works it near side to Ella Brewster. Now to Harris. Her shot up and in. And Sydney Harris at 6 foot. Just nobody who can get in her face there. Oh, we need the live on. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can say. Well, I wasn't for sure what you call yeah. it, so I'm like, um, oh, get yeah, the TV yeah. still on there. Change it. Just I don't point know. Sorry. and say, get going. Mads Hollins with it now for Jackson, guarded by Ashley Anderson. Her pass intended for Sierra Johnson never got there. Oh. Essay with a steal, or Brewster with a steal. Sorry. At the other oh, end is Emma miss. Essay who missed the layup, and Naomi Roper with a rebound. So one and done. That's so crucial for a Rock Springs team with this kind of length to out rebound them is super if they get their shots and they're going to get them at least rebound if they miss and i like that those one and dones crucial for these lady bronx down the stretch this season naomi roper with it now back out top of the key lucy webb watched by emma essay what a mismatch in size there roper oh. with it almost loses the handle and does goes right into the lap of coach shockley <laughs> And out of bounds. I can't see the that yeah. line right there. Yeah, we're up in the rafters here in Rock Springs. 6.25 to go in the third, just underway here in the second half. Rock Springs ball, big lead. Anderson walks it to the far elbow. Now on your side, Harris to Brewster. Ella Brewster kicks it back out top of the key to Anderson. She calls out the play and now gives it to the right elbow to Cassidy Webb. Baseline Anderson works it inside to S.A. Shot up and in. It's Sydney Harris again, and she's just taller than everybody. 
A nice pass from S.A. to Harris, and she finished 34-9 with 5.50 to go in the third. Naomi Roper with it for Jackson. Near side, Bosch. She's open for a moment. Her shot blocked, and all balls, says Cassidy Webb, but the ref does not agree, <laughs> although he's... Who did he call it on? Yeah, he did call it on Webb. Cassidy Webb. Cassidy Webb, second team first in the second half. And to the line goes Bosch. She's been there a bunch for Jackson. She's, she's done everything for Jackson. Point guard, shooting guard. She's done it all. Misses this free throw, though. See, when they roll around the top, they should just drop in. They should just fall in. I, I don't understand. Somebody needs to tell the ball that. Yeah. Just, just go, if you're right that there. far, go in. Bosch gets the second, and how many is she getting? Oh, I think she must have she been out in, past uh, the yeah, line. Yeah, she was beyond the arc, so they're giving her three. She's hit one of two. Roper checks out. Raina Rhodes is in, and here's Bosch's third. Deep knee bend, lets it go, and then this time she does get the roll. It's in, 34 to 11. Rock Springs with it. They have the big lead. Anderson brings it across the timeline. Ashley works it near side of Brewster. Ella Brewster. Baseline now back out. Webb, Brewster, Anderson. Back to Brewster. Ella Brewster to Anderson. Ashley, she'll try a long three. Good. And Ashley Anderson, I, by my count, that's her third three. She has been pretty hot from distance. Zoe Bosch brings it up with 5.15 to go in the third. Near side here, Lucy Webb puts a nice move on, tries to shake free of Cassidy Webb, can't do it. That's Lucy Webb on Cassidy Webb. I just realized that. Oh. Raina Rhodes with it now, guarded by S.A., gets it to Webb. Lucy Webb pulls up the dribble. Now she needs help. Bounce pass to oh. Johnson, back out to Webb. Lucy Webb gets it to Zoe Bosch, who says, let's rethink this, standing on the tiger paw. Gives it to Lucy Webb, back out to Rhodes. Rhodes, her pass picked off, going the other way. Ashley Anderson on road. She'll pull up, and she traveled. Oh, oh. Ashley should have just put that layup in. She decided to kick it out to a teammate, and when she turned around to make the pass, she took too many steps without dribbling. The travel will give it to Jackson. No pressure here from Rock Springs. They tried a little bit of full court stuff. They've backed off now. 4.35 to go in the third. Rock Springs up 37 to 11. Zoe with it now. Bosch to Webb. Lucy Webb almost had it stolen. Now Lucy Webb will try a long three. Off the back of the iron, no good. Emma, Emma Essay goes sky high to pull down the board. To Brewster, to Anderson, drives baseline. Her shot off the bottom of the basket, of the bottom of the backboard. And the rebound, Jackson. Zoe Bosch coast to coast. Her layer oh. is too strong. And Anderson, rebound for Rock Springs. Back and forth with pace. Cassidy Webb, top of the key to S.A. Far side, Anderson, another three. This one too short, and the rebound, Raina Rhodes. So Anderson finally misses one. 37 to 11. Time out here. It's going to be Coach Shockley wants to talk things over. We'll stay right here. 3.50 to go in the third. It's been all Lady Tigers, 37-11. But Coach Shockley trying to make this a teachable moment, work on some things. He rarely drags out the whiteboard, usually just tries to calm the girls down oh, yeah. and then explain a few things to them. Oh, he had the whiteboard now? No, I'm, oh. I'm saying he rarely does. I was trying to describe what he's doing over there. Oh, in the I thought maybe he had the whiteboard huddle. when you no. actually said that. No, it's you're beyond working on plays here. You just want to... Kind of keep spirits up. And the girls sort of half-heartedly put a fist in, the, in and say, let's go. But maybe they're just tired. It's a long trip down here. and It'll be an early start tomorrow. Rainer Rhodes will inbounds far side. And here comes Zoe Bosch across the line, picked up by Essa. Near side, Roper at the elbow. Double team, but she gets it out to Bosch. Good job by Roper to recognize the double team was coming. Naomi launches a three. Two strong. Rebound, Webb. Cassidy Webb works it ahead to Anderson. To S.A. Back to Anderson. Back to S.A. Emma S.A. Back to Anderson. Around the horn, Brewster gets it to Webb. Cassidy Webb back to Ella Brewster. 
Long three. That's Anderson. She's too short. She's missed her last two from the arc. Maybe she's cooled off a bit. Zoe Bosch passes. Jennifer Roper is tipped by Emma S.A. Jackson will retain possession as it goes out of bounds right in front of Coach Shockley's girls. Bosch inbounds to Rainer Rhodes. Ripped away from her by Cassidy Webb. Just mm. stolen away. Anderson with it now for Rock Springs. Baseline three. That's Brewster. No. Rebound. Emma Essay, and she's fouled. Her shot didn't go. But she was bumped, and that might be Bosch again. No, Sierra Johnson, her first team first of the second half. And to the line is Emma Essay. A 51% free throw shooter. She converts that to make it 38 11. Out comes Sydney Harris. In for Rock Springs is Bryn Vider, the sophomore. Second one for SA is no good. Rebound. Jackson, it's Mads Holland pulls down the board. Gets it to Rhodes. Back to Zoe Bosch. Bosch across the line. Zoe finds Mads Holland's open. Mads looking for oh. Bosch cutting, but that's stolen away by Brewster. Ella Brewster out to Biter. Top of the key. Long three there from Cassidy Webb. No good off the mark. Rebound Jackson. It's Zoe Bosch pulling down the board. She does that about 2.7 times a game. Raina Rhodes with it now. Driving the lane. Picked off. It's Cassidy Webb comes up with a loose change for the Lady Tigers. Back to Anderson. She'll try that three again and has this one. Boy, she's not afraid to try him. She's made about half the threes she's taken. And she's got to lead the Lady Tigers in scoring at this point. 41-11. to 11. Timeout on the floor, and we'll go as well. With a break in the action, you're enjoying Brock's basketball in KZ95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Experience Jackson Hole like a local. Recently renovated, the 49er boasts a new lobby, extended continental breakfast, indoor swimming pool, fitness facility, and 12-person outdoor hot tub. Located on Pearl Street, the 49er is just three short blocks from Jackson's greatest bars and restaurants, where you'll find your home away from home. Enjoy your time in Jackson as part of the town square ends, and stay at the 49er Inn and Suites. This is KZ95 with live coverage of the Jackson Bronx. Meeting your style and budget with four in-town hotel locations and more than 400 rooms. Town Square Inns of Jackson Hole includes the Antler Inn, El Country Inn, Cowboy Village Resort, and 49er Inn and Suites. And keeping the name Clarine Law alive in Jackson forever be Clarine Law's places. I'm going to tell you, that's Jackson Hole's queen. Yeah. England had Queen Elizabeth, but Jackson Hole had that lady. Jackson Oops. basketball with 2.10 to go. In the third quarter, Lucy Webb with it now, working on MSA. Webb tries to pass to Bosch. Nice feed inside of Holland. Her shot no good, but it's blocked by Biter. Did Biter get a hand? Mm -hmm. I think, yes. Bryn Bider will pick up her third foul, getting ready for a whole mess of substitutions on the Rock Springs side of things. Mads Hollins to the line, 23% free throw shooter, trying to chew into the lead a little bit. Jackson down 30. Hollins' shot is no good, off the mark. And now we... Boy, we get a look at Carly Nandrup. She was in there earlier. Janessa Hansen also in there. And uh, our first look at uh, Kaylee Lyonberg is in there. And then this girl in the backcourt. Number three? I don't have, well, maybe I do. Yeah, I don't have a three. <laughs> I'm going to have to get my cheat sheet. Oh, wait, 30. 30, all right, that sounds better. Is Hanson with it now for Rock Springs. 30 is uh, Tina Copeland. Okay. It'll be a foul on Jackson here. It'll be Lucy Webb, her third. Fouls becoming a little bit of an issue for the Lady Bronx. I think Lucy, Zoe, and Mads Holland all three have three. 
Janessa Hansen works at far side. Kaylee Lionberg whipped around the perimeter now to Janessa Hansen. Hansen all the way cross court. Lionberger gives it back top of the key to Copeland. And now again to Janessa Hansen. And they're just working around the rim here. And Honey, you're selling an ad. Oops. Oops. Hansen with it, far side to Copeland, Tina Copeland. Into the near elbow, Lionberger. She walks it to the far side elbow. Now hands off to Hansen. Janessa Hansen, nothing going on here for Rock Springs. Good defense by Jackson. Little pop shot by Lionberger is short, no good. Rebound. Lady Tigers will get another try at it. Hansen to Lionberger. Lionberger, Roper on her, gets it back to Hansen. Hansen floats a pass in the middle. Intended for Nandrup off her hand, stolen away by Holland. Jackson with the ball now. Zoe Bosch. Down of 45 seconds to go in the third. Bosch to Webb at the near elbow. Webb walks it to the middle. Now far side angle. Gives it to Zoe Bosch. Bosch, nice spin dribble and to put up a shot. No good. That's too hard off the glass. Rebound Sydney Harris for Rock Springs. Here come the Lady Tigers. Play for a final shot here, maybe. Nandra works it to Hansen. Hansen all the way across the court to Lionberger. Down to 18 seconds, 17. Copeland near elbow to Hansen, directing traffic. Hansen working on Roper. Now coming out, Webb bumps her. Now far side, Lionberger. Her shot too short. Rebound, Holland. Holland gets rid of it, and there are going to be no time here. Two seconds. Allison Bircham, somebody's got to shoot. Uh, Nobody does. Just after the buzzer, Zoe, I, Allison Bircham did not know how much time was on the clock, and time ran out as Jackson was trying to get one last shot off. So after three, it's Rock Springs 41, Jackson 11. We'll be right back with the exciting finish on Jackson Hole Radio Network. In case you haven't heard, Healing Waters is offering a machine that can penetrate deep into your mind. Live play-by-play -play coverage of Jackson Bronx Sports continues with Jake Nichols on KZ94. Wonder if Charity can bring that Neo sculpt down the road. These boys and girls might need it as they'll huh? spend the night in Casper tonight and play Kelly Walsh tomorrow in the morning. Give them some added strength. It might. Yeah, they need more strength. Zoe Bosch with a doubt just underway in the fourth. Jackson down 41-11, down 30. Bosch with it, picks up her dribble, gives it to Lucy Webb. Webb near side and the elbow to Roper. Bounce pass to Sierra Johnson, back to Roper. Naomi works around Cassidy Webb on her. Pass oh. almost stolen away by oh. Emma AC. Oh. And now AC does steal it away. SA, Emma SA, spin move on Webb. Her shot no good, but in there committing the foul is... Zoe Bosch, who is very eager to claim ownership of that foul, she raised her hand right away. So that's me. Yes. Yeah, that's, and that's her, her fourth. Yeah. She looks over to Coach Shockley, and what can you say? First one up and in. And I notice Emma Acey does not take much time. She just puts up her free throws right away. No time to get ready. Her second is good as well. Bam. And it's 43-11. Rock Springs. Their biggest lead of the night, 32 points. Oh, good math. Yeah, I'm getting better at that. Zoe Bosch brings it up across the tiger claw. She'll wait there at one of the...
toes and now gives it to Raina Rhodes. Rhodes to Holland. Mads almost over and back. Saved it, but not for long. Emma Esse with it. Gives it to Anderson. Drives the lane. And that shot won't go, but Anderson will hit the line. 42% free throw shooter is the 5'7 senior. The guilty party in the foul is Lucy Webb. That's nope. her. Raina nope. Rhodes. Raina Rhodes. Got us spread the love. Her second and Anderson at the line is good. Boy, she's got to be the leading scorer. We'll get some stats to you if we can. I'll try. 44-11 Lady Tigers. Her second gets a shooter's roll and that's in as well. Jackson Ball Rhodes fires into Zoe Bosch. Walks it across midcourt. Roper cutting, gets the pass. Roper works at far side of Rhodes at the elbow. Raina Rhodes dribbles between two Rock Springs Tigers, gets it to Roper, oh. her shot off the mark. That might have been partially blocked by Biter mm -hmm. and out of bounds. 6.50 to go in the fourth, bringing it up is Anderson having a whale of a night for Coach Candelaria. Here's Anderson baseline. Good defense by Holland. Right with her, though. Mad says... I've seen enough threes out of you, kid. I'm going to get a little closer. And a whistle in Jackson Ball, what happened? I'm she stepped sure. out of bounds, maybe. I guess so. Holland got right up on Anderson, and she might have backed up out of bounds. Rhodes with it now for Jackson. Reina kicks it out to Naomi Roper. Roper blows right by Essay and now lost the handle out of bounds. Well, she had a good idea. She walked it right by S.A. Brewster picked her up, and boy, I'd get nervous too if you got 5'11 behind you, 5'11 in front of you, S.A. and Brewster, and Roper just lost the handle. It dribbled out of bounds. Uh, Rock Springs ball, and they're talking something over. Yeah, I'm say ref's checking something out there. 6.27 okay. to go. It's been all Tigers all the time. Anderson will inbounds from... Way out yonder. Looks like they're all the way out there in Green River. It's so far away. Here's Anderson with it now. To Bryn Bider. Bider. Roper on her. Works it to S.A. To Brewster. Near side to Anderson. Thought about that three. Won't take it. And again, around the perimeter go the Rock Spring Lady Tigers. Patiently waiting for something to open up. That's something almost did. Anderson again nice thought hustle. about a three. She wanted it, but Rhodes came out to greet her. Bider with it now. Bider to Anderson. Jackson in a zone oh. defense now. That pass gets away. Roper is the first one on it for Jackson. Naomi Roper with this oh. takeaway. And now she was passing. I'm not sure who it was intended for out of bounds. Nobody really there. Good hustle by Naomi Roper as that ball got away from all the Lady Tigers. And she went and tracked it down. Four, five, forty-eight. We got a running clock going here soon, I would think. No? Uh, I think it's going to be up by 40. Oh. Or more. All right, then. Tina Copeland back in the game for... Lady Tigers, nice rebound by Carly Nandrup. Roper will, uh, sorry, Copeland will try another one. That's off the back of the iron, no good. Scramble for the rebound and a whistle. Fall on Carly Nandrup, the junior, her second, team third. Five and a half minutes to go in regulation. Rock Springs up 45-11. Jackson Zoe Bosch over the line with four fouls to Raina Rhodes. Rhodes, bounce pass, near side. Bosch tries a long three. That's off the side of the backboard. That's a, that was a long way to launch one, but well, you don't make shots if you don't take shots. No. Rock Springs ball, Janessa Hansen with it to Copeland. Copeland right here in the near angle. Works at far side, Lionberger. Kaylee Lionberger to Copeland back to Lionberger. Now to Hanson. Hanson floats one inside to Sydney Harris. The six footer gets it back out to the perimeter, and it's Copeland back out to Hanson. Now to Carly Nandrup. Around the rim they go, and nobody wants to take the shot. Copeland, nice inside feed to Nandrup, working on Sierra Johnson. And Sierra I thought was playing good I defense she was there. Too. 
<laughs> she is going to draw the foul. Boy, I thought she was playing that well. She picks up her second and is up to the line. A 57% free throw shooter leads all Lady Tigers. The junior deep knee bend, and she's got the first. Lucy Webb checking in with four fouls to replace Bosch, who also has four. We still have neglected to mention, if you're a Rock Springs fan, they're without Vera Bernabeu, the junior, averaging 5.3 points a game. She's got an ACL situation. And that second free throw was also made, so 47-11. Roper with the ball now for Jackson. Copeland watching her. And a pass to Webb too high, but Raina Rhodes comes out of nowhere to save it. Raina Rhodes with some hustle, but it's going to be an over and back. Too bad, but a good job by Rhodes, who she just always shows up whenever the... She's fast. You lose track of her. Yeah, she just gets there. All of a sudden, you're like, where did she come from? Copeland wide open. She won't take the shot, though, for Rock Springs. 4.15 to go in the fourth. Lionberger back to Copeland, back to Lionberger. She's got Hanson wide open here in the near angle. Hanson walks it to the top of the circle to Copeland. The lefty will try a three. Too strong. Rebound is Mads Holland. She almost was fighting with her own teammate there. Mads pulls it down, and I think it's going to be Nandrup with a foul. No. Oh, oh boy. They're going to get. Oh, uh, they might have called jump ball. Oh, maybe a jump, yeah. yeah. That was a yeah, quick jump. jump Lionberger with it. Now Rock Springs retains possession. Janessa Hansen, far side Copeland. The lefty gives it back to Jansen. Hansen, sorry, Janessa Hansen. Hansen with it now. Back to Copeland. Floats one into Sydney Harris. The six foot center goes right to the rack, but misses the layup. Rebound, Mads Holland. Jackson Ball, Raina Rhodes doing the guard duty now with Bosch sitting to Lucy Webb. Webb, a couple of dribbles, pulls it up now and passes to Holland. She pulls that out from between her legs and made a <laughs> nice recovery, not the greatest pass. Webb had a shot for a moment, but oh yeah. That, that, that uh, Sydney Harris is every oh. bit of six feet. That shot no good. Rebound Carly Nandrup. Yeah, Harris is a legit six foot. Lionberger hands off to Copeland. Just over three to go in the fourth inside to Sydney Harris. She is triple teams, kicks it out to Lionberger. Lionberger drives the paint, kick out wide open. Copeland, the lefty fires, no good off the mark with the three, but pretty close. Holland with a rebound for Jackson. It's Lucy Webb over the line. Lucy pulls up her dribble, near side finds Harley Rommel back to Webb. Haven't seen a ton of Burcham tonight for Jackson. Webb with it now, and a reach in or a five second could be anything. What is it? Um, timeout? Or a timeout. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I didn't mention. Timeout on the floor with 2.34 to go in the fourth. It's Rock Springs 47, Jackson 11. Right back after these words. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95 on the Jackson Hole Radio Network. and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available, with names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senco, Fine, and DeWalt. Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Grovant. Call 733-6000, 733-6000. Live play-by-play -play coverage of Jackson Bronx Sports continues with Jake Nichols on KZ95. For Jackson Old Radio, Jake Nichols alongside Kimmy K, Liam McPeak, and Xander Witt are back home in Jackson. They don't travel. Must be nice. i got to get a job like that. <laughs> i got to go back to high school, and I don't have to go on the road. I don't have to do anything I don't want to. I know, I'm lucky. Oh, well. Two and a half minutes to go with the fourth. Jackson Ball, Lucy Webb to Zoe Bosch. 
Nice bounce pass inside to Holland. Her shot partially blocked. Sorry, that Sierra Johnson tries again, and it's Sydney Harris. And out of the, how do you get a shot over her? She has got some length to her, but a good try there by Sierra Johnson. Missed the first shot, tried her own rebound, and Harris hacked her. Or, well, they're going to say somebody else got a piece of her. Kaylee Lionberger, either way, to the line goes. Oh. Sierra Johnson, <laughs> she misses that and tries to shake off the bad juju. She'll try again. Her second. Johnson, a 33% free throw shooter and splashes the net with that one. Rock Springs with the ball, 2.15 to go with the fourth. Copeland works it around the horn. Nandrup to Hanson. All the way cross court to Nandrup inside to Sydney Harris. Harris, double team. It won't matter to her. She's so tall. Now kicks it outside of Lionberger. Kaylee can't find anywhere to go. Bosch right on her hip to Hanson. Now to Nandrup. Nandrup drives the lane. Spin move. Knocks Zoe Bosch down. Zoe gets back up. There's a wide open three from the baseline. Rattles in and out from Hanson. Rebound. No good by Sydney Harris, but she's fouled on the putback, and she'll go to the line. Guilty party is Bosch, and she's done for the night. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, that's only her fourth. Oh, well. Zoe oh. thought she, Zoe's coming off the floor. She's like, maybe that's five. Something one. Yeah, maybe they checked something there. I don't know. Zoe thought she I was thought done. I thought she was at five, too, but. Harris, by the way, from the line is, she made the first. She's a 39% free throw shooter. Her second is no good. Rebound, nice job by Sierra Johnson. Leads the Lady Bronx in boards. Mads Holland, a close second, stolen away. Tina Copeland for Rock Springs as she blocked the pass from Bosch. Now she's pushed right out of bounds as Zoe gave her no room whatsoever <laughs> on that far side. And now Zoe is officially done. One way or another, Zoe says, I'm coming out of here. And now she does with 134 to go. Bosch has finally fouled out. To, it'll be Tina Copeland to the line. No numbers on her. She doesn't play a whole bunch. 48 to 12. It looks like Lady Bronx. Well, maybe still got time to get something. The lefty Copeland is good with that. And I like it. They just actually Raina have Rose, give yeah. it to us. So. Raina looked like she was ready to just go inbound. She's like, let's play ball. And the second from Copeland is good as well. 50 to 12, Rock Springs up. Jackson ball with one and a half to go. Raina Rhodes will bring it up across the line. Near side to Harley Rommel. Harley puts a move on Abby Jones on the game now for Jackson. Pass to Teddy for Rose. That's going to go all the way in the backcourt over and back. Looked like Abby Jones, the junior, might have got a hand on that pass to cause it to get away from everybody. So now with a minute 15, Rock Springs ball. Hanson inbounds to Tina Copeland. Copeland over to Lionberger. Lionberger drives towards the free throw line. Now gives to oh. Hanson. She drives the lane. On the way there, she got bumped. I Janessa think she Hansen. Took it more than one step. She kind of Euro stepped her way in, but they're going to get one of the Lady Bronx on the reach in. It'll send Hanson to the line. Janessa, the 5'7 junior, a 40% free throw shooter. I don't see who the foul is on. They didn't post it. She misses her first. 18 fouls. So Jackson came in here playing aggressive. Man, they are getting ready for Kelly Walsh. As they're getting their fouls worth. Hanson second. That won't go either. Rebound goes right back out to Hanson. Janessa Hansen gives it to Tina Copeland down to the last 60 seconds of this one. Lionberger hands off to Abby Jones, gives it to Hansen. Hansen to Lionberger, back to Hansen. Now to Copeland. Copeland walks it to the free throw line. And over to Abby Jones. Abby Jones drives the lane. She's double teamed, and Raina Rhodes might have just got a reach in, and she could be done. And Raina, boy, looks like she needs the rest. She was slow oh. to get up. That's actually Raina's first. Oh, yeah, she's. 
Well, they're going to call the foul on. We don't have an 11. Oh, that's uh, that was Abby Jones with the charge. Okay. And Rhodes took it. And Reina very slow to get up. She takes a long three here. Well short. Rebound Carly Nandrup for Rock Springs. Just hope Reina's okay. Here's a, whoa, Lionberger wide open, works it inside to Carly Nandrup. Her shot off the bottom of the rim, no good, but the Rock Springs keeps it alive with the rebound. Kaylee Lionberger takes a little walk, gives it to Hanson. Hanson working on Rommel. Nice weave going by the Lady Tigers now down to the last 10 seconds. Hanson cross court, wide open. Copeland baseline three, good. And Tina Copeland's had a pretty good game off the bench. Now that Let's should do it. It will. And the final score, Rock Springs, 53. And the Jackson Lady Bronx, 12. And Zoe Bosch receiving a sportsmanship award. I've never seen anybody do something like that. She certainly deserves anything you want to give her. Zoe Bosch, she fouled out today, but boy, she gave it all. All the Lady Bronx gave it all, but the final score again, lopsided in favor of the other team. Rock Springs, 53. Jackson, 12. We'll be back to wrap things up. Hopefully get the stats to you after these words. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on the Jackson Hall Radio Network. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, he, he throws it, and he caught it, and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes the dynamite. And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So, crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it, the white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom, goes the dynamite. Oh, he's gonna get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. The dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If if you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. And we're back here courtside of Rock Springs as we'll wrap up the girls' game. It was all Lady Tigers. Rock Springs with a... Ah. Big victory here, 53-12, the final. The Lady Tigers of Rock Springs with this win improved their record of six and 10 on this season. And now sporting a two game win streak. The Lady Tigers beat the Kelly Walsh Lady Trojans last night on this court. And we'll get the final stats for you. It looks like, Kimmy K, what do you got over there? You want to start with who? Oh, well, I got to do some adding. Oh, I'm going to do some math. Either All right. way. Well, we'll just start from the top. Um, Biter had... Oh, so you're starting with uh, Rock Springs. Bryn Biter, the sophomore, yes. coming off the bench. She has three points. Okay. Uh... Carly Nandrup, yep, number Carly. four. Yeah. She had two. Yeah. Um, then we're down to Anderson. Ashley Anderson, who I think had to lead all scores. She had a game. Boy. Oh, yeah. She, she got four threes. So that's 12, 16 points. Okay. Um, Ace. Oh, wait. I skipped Webb. Uh, Cat Cassidy Webb had two. All right. Um, Emma Ace. 
six. Um, Cope Flynn had five. Um, Hanson, two. And Harris, nine. Sydney Harris had nine. Boy, that is going to be a front court to contend with next year. Sydney Harris still a junior, six foot junior. Ella Brewster a junior at 5'11", and Emma Essay a 5'11 sophomore. That is some size in the paint, and they're all going to be around next year. Boy, that's impressive. Uh, player of the game for Rock Springs. Three, two, one. Ashley Anderson. Ashley Anderson. Holy cow, the senior just did not stop shooting threes and hit half of them. She had a heck of a game. What do you got for our Lady Bronx? Uh, Naomi Roper with one. Zoe Bosch had, oh, let's see here. Five. Uh, Lucy Webb, two. Uh, Sierra Johnson, one. Uh, Raina Rhodes, three. And that's it. All right. You want to give an MVP to our Jackson side of things? Who'd you like best? I got to go Zoe today. Zoe, yeah. I, I, I could Zoe. do that. Well, uh, Raina had a good game. Uh, Sierra Johnson, while points don't reflect it, really had to battle in the paint for rebounds. I was but just going to say Matt Holland was right up there with Sienna, too, today. Ooh. Yeah. I, uh, I'll go with Zoe uh, because the tiebreaker was her following out. I like that. Okay. <laughs> like I, the well, I did. I wouldn't have said that. I like three or four, yeah. but I went with Zoe. Most points she did fall out. Okay. Hopefully, uh, yeah, you're right along with us as we just wrap up the girls game boys will tap here at about 10 11 12 minutes they got some more festivities going on i'm not sure what so uh, we'll reset things get ready for the boys when we come back after this break we are on of course terrestrial radio back there in jackson at 95.3 kz95 if you're driving around to get the radio going uh, if you want to just hear the audio kz95.live uh, that's internet wide everywhere the audio and then hopefully you're joining us on our youtube channel jackson Jackson Old Radio is the name of the YouTube channel as we're live streaming tonight's games. Boys, coming up, tap time just about 10 minutes away. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95 and the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Jackson Lumber, the board store, Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available. With names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine, and DeWalt, Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Gromont. Call 733-6000. 733-6000. Live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Bronc Basketball is brought to you in part by the Elk Country Inn. Coming May of 2020, the Elk Country will offer new rooms and amenities. The new expansion will bring a brand new indoor-outdoor swimming pool, indoor and outdoor spas, a new dining area with complimentary breakfast, conference facilities, and so much more. Located on Pearl Street, you'll be able to leave the car and walk to Jackson's greatest shopping, dining, entertainment, bars, and breweries. Live like a local at the new Elk Country Inn, coming this May. We're back here in Rock Springs for Jackson Old Radio. I'm Jake Nichols alongside Kimmy K. All the action tonight brought to you by our friends at Town Square Inns of Jackson Hole. The McPeak Group, Jackson Hole's premier real estate team at Sotheby's International Realty. Jackson Lumber, Jackson's original board store. And Young Life of Jackson Hole, where they're all about teenagers. Getting ready for the boys game. This should be a good matchup. The boys, uh, Jackson Bronx, in desperate need of a win after dropping their last two real heartbreakers at home. They lost to Riverton. I mean, that was legit. Riverton's 
might end up being the best team in 4A, certainly in the 4A West. They're really, really good. Uh, this Riverton was a hard loss. Tough, tough loss to take. And for uh, these Rock Springs Tigers, they come in on a three-game win streak. They just played last night on this very court. They beat Kelly Walsh 66-48, the final there, to improve their record to 9-7 and seven under Bill Rosette. These Rock Spring Tigers, 9-7 and seven overall, 2-1 and one in conference on a three-game win streak, ranked number eight out of the 16 teams in the 4A for Coach Hayden Hatfield. His boys riding a two-game losing streak, 10-5 and five overall, 3-2 and two in conference, 3-0 and oh in quadrant. That's the key number. And ranked number six, they slipped the ranking. In fact, they're behind Star Valley despite having Whoa, beat the Braves really? in a head-to-head -head matchup. So I don't know. The coaches and media poll has got figured out that I don't know, but... Star Valley has moved ahead of the Jackson Bronx in the rankings. All right, all right. Jackson coming off that 68-66 OT loss to Riverton. Uh, they uh, lost to Cody 58-48. The 10-point loss looks worse than it was. They just had a meltdown two minutes. In fact, yeah. we uh, we talked to Coach Hayden Hatfield about that Cody game that I think he'd like to forget, and here's what uh, Hatfield had to say about Cody. Uh, Cody, you know, one, it was a, you know, fallback from the Riverton game. Emotionally, mentally, those kids, uh, Friday was hard. So Saturday, you know, Cody, morning game was all 15 hours after our Riverton game. So it was hard for them to step back up. But, um, you know, they played well. Not a hot start like we're used to. Um, but, you know, give it to Cody. I mean, they're, whew, they're a big team. They're huge, athletic. You know, Talich going to Notre Dame, took control that game late scored 22 on us uh, they beat us straight up and uh you know then they go out and beat natrona the next week by 22 so <laughs> you know they're a really good team now luke talich who is not known for his basketball more for his football did just take control of that game the senior his 22 points and he must have had 18 of those in the fourth i mean he just came on and yeah. just salted it away for cody but all right let's look ahead and i thought you know coach what what is it like to get on the road maybe it's a good time to hit the road uh it's a chance to you know spent a lot of time together on the bus in the hotel and maybe just get back down to business and away from the distractions of Jackson Hole. Here's what Coach Hatfield had to say about regrouping here on this road trip. Yeah, tour to Wyoming is what we're on right now. So, you know, it's I think we're all of seven hours on a bus today and probably six tomorrow. So long weekend, but it's good for our guys to get together, escape Jackson for a little bit, go on the road. I mean, you know, we're playing in tough places, especially tonight against Rock Springs. Rings, but I think it is a good time for a road trip. You know, lost two straight, but, you know, uh, two very winnable games this weekend. It'll be tough on the road like any game in Wyoming. But uh, I think our group, we, we're very high right now. I think that, you know, after a you know, long weekend, we've come back, had a good week of practice, um, cured some things, headaches that we were having. So we're, we're really excited about this weekend. Well, yeah, there should be a, a good weekend. Now, these games won't count in Quadrum, but they could be end up being very important games when we talk about that Star Valley Braves team. Now, should Jackson go to Afton here in a, another week and lose that game, that would give that would make them even in head-to-head -head matchups. Star Valley does play both Rock Springs and Kelly Walsh, so those could be deciding games. How did you do against this team tonight, Rock Springs, and how did you do against Kelly Walsh? Are they doing the opposite of us? Like, is Star, yeah, Star Valley's at Kelly so. Walsh tonight, right? And then I they'll think be here so. tomorrow night. Yes. We're flip-flopping. So we we'll know tomorrow how Star Valley did against Kelly Walsh. 
and vice versa. Yeah, and uh, well, first let's talk about this Rock Springs team. They have some weapons. This is a dangerous team, and I, I watched them play last night against uh, Kelly Walsh, and you better take care of the senior, David DeBoer, number two. He is electric, real athlete, probably the best athlete on the court. Uh, he averages 15-7 a game, pulls down four boards. He does everything for Rock Springs. He's the leading assist guy, their leading three shooter. They also have size inside with Dalton Thomas at 6'4". He plays a real good game down to the paint. He is their second highest leading scorer with 13 a game and pulls down six and a half boards a game. Two guys that you've got to take care of, David DeBoer and Dalton Thomas. I asked Coach Hatfield, how is he going to deal with those two? And he had a surprise for me of what he's going to do. And I'm going to say it quietly because we're not supposed to let Rock Springs know okay. the game plan going in. But here's what Coach Hatfield had to say about what he's going to do to match up with the Rock Springs offensive talent. No, I hope this doesn't come up for the game, but we're going to we're throwing a 2-3 zone out. Uh, we're going to try a zone tonight, see what we can do. They're, you know, they struggle from the three-point line. Um, it'll be our first time zoning pretty much all year, but we worked a lot on it this week. Uh, it'll be a good little change of pace for us, I think. Um, the divorce kid, like you said, is really, really good. He had a really good game last night against Kelly, uh, which they won by 18. So um, we got to stop him. The Max Thomas kid, he's a big kid, 6'3", 6 6'4". 6 He'll be tough. He plays for bigger, though. He, he plays he huge. really has a nice touch in the paint. He does. So we got to limit him inside the paint, hopefully get him to shoot some jumpers. Uh, that's the hope. But in a 2-3 zone, hopefully they uh, shoot a lot more jumpers than they're used to. Well, Jackson does not, as you heard Coach Hatfield say, they man up all season. They have not played zone other than falling into it every once in a while. So it'll be interesting to see how well the Bronx can play a 2-3 zone, having never done it really all season. And then, uh, you know, for those of you who don't know basketball, when you play a zone defense, what you do is invite your opponent to shoot from outside. And I think Coach Hatfield has it dead right. This team does not, the Rock Springs does not shoot real well from distance. Uh, they're shooting so far this season offensively about 43% of their shots, 24% from beyond the arc. That's not very good uh, distance-wise, 24% from for triples. Offensively, this team's ranked number 11, 55 points a game on offense. N not terribly great shooters. So, if you're Jackson, and here's our keys to the game, the zone one and done is what you need. You need the Rock Springs to come down, miss the shot, and you better get the board, especially when you're in the 2-3 zone. Second key to the game, number two, number three, you've got to handle those for Rock Spring Tigers. DeBoer and uh, number three, Thomas. They're going to be all over the court. And finally, the third, get comfortable. you got to settle in here in Rock Springs. It's going to be noisy, going to be loud. Tune it out and get comfortable playing that zone and take care of business. Let's get the player introductions for you, the boys introducing themselves, courtesy of Young Life Jackson Hall. What's up, Runner? Junior. Yeah, Mac Fairbairn, Senior. AJ Fowler, Junior. Owen Connor, Junior. Uh, Carson Harlan, Senior. Isaac Larson, Senior. Paul Marzel, Sophomore. Andrew Hamm, Junior. Gavin Kilo, Junior. Christian Mack, Senior. Drew Rebel, Senior. Chris Murray, Senior. I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more in at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more.
Well, there you go. We're ready to go here in Rock Springs. Big game for both teams. Very much would either team like to win this one. Rock Springs trying to defend their home court. They've only lost once here all season. They'd like to make it two in a row. They won here last night against Green River. Jackson's got to get off the schneid. Two losses last week in Jackson. They jump on the bus and want to put that behind them. Starting lineup for the Jackson Bronx. Who they got out there? Uh, we got Seb Runner, Isaac Larson, uh, Palmer Wessel, Gavin Keelan, and Andrew Hanna. For the hometown Rock Springs Tigers, Kale Anderson, the sophomore, gets a rare star. Javon Newman, he's a – boy, I, if I'm coach, I, I tell Newman to shoot more. If I'm coach Bill Rosette, I really like Newman's game. And then, of course, uh, Trenton Butcher, the senior, and we talked about DeBoer and Dalton Thomas. Here's the face-off, or I guess it's the tip-off in basketball. Tip -off, yeah. yeah, Dalton Thomas, 6'4 against 6'7 Andrew Hanna. Didn't we meet Rock Spring in regionals last year? The Possibly. Saturday morning game. I can't remember yesterday. Ooh, that we lost at the buzzer. The tip is won by Dalton Thomas. That didn't look like it was thrown up fairly. Here's DeBoer. He is a baller. Keep your eye on this guy, David DeBoer, the senior. Works at far side of Javon Newman. Newman being watched by Isaac Larson. There's a long three, no good. So Jackson zone, we'll see if it gives these guys trouble. That's their first look at it. Dalton Thomas missed the three. Sepp Brunner with it now, just underway. No score here in Rock Springs. Sepp Brunner with a long three. That's good. And Sepp splashes the net to make it three nothing. Tigers. I don't know if Rosette planned on seeing this 2 3. We'll see how he handles it as Javon Newman works it far side of DeBoer. David DeBoer. Did he do the back two to three Newman? Because of 2 3. Now it's Kale Anderson. Long baseline three from DeBoer. That's off the mark. And one of the things DeBoer may not do well is shoot the triple. Isaac Larson driving the lane there, and he had no chance with that as Dalton Thomas came to block it in the left block. I don't know what Isaac was just kind of out of control and threw up a prayer, and Dalton Thomas helped them out by whacking it out of bounds. Seb Brunner will inbounds just a minute in. Jackson up 3 0. Hannah stolen away by Dalton Thomas. He'll try to go one on one on Andrew. And Hannah blocks it. Gavin Keelan with it there. 6-7 blocking 6-4. And a whistle. And what's that? I'm pretty sure that was a foul on number two. Yeah, DeBoer plays a very aggressive game. He is on the edge of out of control almost all game. And that's what makes him appealing. He's hyper aggressive, very big competitor. But he can, get, he can be his own worst enemy. That pass off the hands of Larson right through his hands. Brunner, and I don't know if Isaac <laughs> was ready for that or not, but it's out of bounds. Turnover. Six and a half to go, just underway. Jackson up three, nothing, courtesy of a Seb Brunner triple. Javon Newman with it now for Rock Springs, near side. Bounce pass inside. Anderson gets it right back from Thomas. Another bounce pass inside. That shot up, no good by Butcher. And the rebound, Jackson. Keelan, I think, got the board. Seb Brunner with it now. DeBoer's matched up on him. Floats one to Hannah, up and in right over Butcher. Nice pass from Seb Brunner. Beautiful floater, and Hannah finished. And it's 5 nothing Bronx. Javon Newman with it. Brunner's on him. But that's the 2-3 zone. Brunner's going to get everybody who's over here on the angle. Pass oh. to Butcher. He lost it. Seb Brunner comes up with it. Seb going one on two. Euro step. Oh. And that's blocked by DeBoer getting back. And we said he is such a good athlete. There's a lefty long three from Javon Newman. And I told Coach Rosette I wanted to see Newman shoot more. But not if he shoots like that. That three was <laughs> way off the mark. And Jackson basketball. Coach Hatfield is telling Seb something. What is he trying to explain with his body what he wants Seb to do? Brunner brings it up. And Coach Rosette chooses to have DeBoer on Seb. And I agree with that matchup. DeBoer tries tries to steal it away, could not. Now it's to Keelan. Keelan floats inside of Hannah, stolen away by uh. Thomas. 
Dalton Thomas, a senior, ripped it out of Hannah's hands. Not a great pass. And here's Kale Anderson. His pass to DeBoer and right behind him. DeBoer was cutting down the baseline. The pass went behind him to where DeBoer was rather than where he was going. So a turn of Roxbrook showing a little jitter here at home. As they come out a little tight, making some mistakes. Brunner drives the lane, kick out to Isaac Larson. The lefty drives right down the cylinder, but can't get the shot to go. It just laid there on the lip. Newman with it now for Rock Springs. Bounce pass inside, Butcher oh, nice. and Keelan blocks him. Gavin Keelan, and that's something the Bronx can do in that 2-3 zone is block more shots. That was a careless pass stolen away by Dalton Thomas. Thomas plays bigger than his 6-4, and he just reached up and pawed that right out of the air. Thomas kick out Newman. He'll try a three off the front of the iron. No good. Gavin Keelan with the board. When you're in the 2-3 zone like the Bronx are, rebounds is something you better do, and blocking shots down low in the paint is something you better do. Hannah, another ball off his hands, goes to Kale Anderson, whistle, timeout, and it's Rock Springs calling it. We'll stay here as Bill Rosette maybe wants to talk over that. 2-3 zone or maybe just wants to settle his group down because we are at the 423 mark. Rock Springs yet to score. Defensive struggle. Yeah. 5 nothing Jackson. And the Tigers, we said don't shoot great. And right now Coach Hatfield is seeing everything he wanted to <laughs> see. He, he wanted to come out playing zone challenging Rock Springs to hit shots and so far the Tigers have not. Jackson back out on the floor quickly, and we'll get our first look at Willis Witheride in the game now. Replacing Palmer Wetzel. It'll be Larson, Brunner, Witheride, <laughs> Hannah and Keelan. Newman with it now. Set Brunner on him. Gives it to Kale Anderson. Inside a butcher. Kicks it back out to board with a long three. That's a million miles away off the back of the iron. No good. Isaac Larson with the board. DeBoer reached in. Larson behind the back pass and a charge as oh. Isaac ran into Javon Newman. Newman gets up gimpy on that right knee. And checking into the game for Coach Rosette in Rock Springs is Sam Lionberger. And we've got Carlin, uh, Carson Harlan checking in for Isaac Larson. Harlan in for Larson. Those two practically interchangeable, though Larson has come on of late. Here's DeBoer driving the baseline. Oh. Hannah gave him nowhere to go, but he saved himself. Lionberger kicks it back out. David DeBoer drives the lane right around Hannah. Shot no good. Nice defense by Andrew Hannah. Gave DeBoer nothing to look at. Keelan wide open three. He'll try it. Rattles in and out. No good. Lionberger with the board. Pace picks up. DeBoer with it now for the Tigers. Hands off to Newman, gets it back. DeBoer, his three off the back of the iron. David DeBoer not feeling it yet. Lionberger battles for the rebound with Witherite, and Willis is going to get whistled. Yep. Jackson second, his first. Both teams with two team fouls now. 3.25 to go on the first. DeBoer will inbounds from underneath his own basket. Witherite on him. DeBoer looking around, bounce pass inside. It's... Lionberger hands oh, oh. back off to DeBoer, who scrambles for the loose ball, gets it. And now Javon Newman settles things down. The 5'10 junior, far side, long three, no good by Thomas. Rebound Jackson, although banging, that's got to be a foul. That's going to be Kale Anderson picking that up as he tried to dive into the pile to pick up a loose ball. But now Anderson comes out. We'll get our first look at Joey Stauffer, the 5'10". Junior for the Tigers. 306 to go, and nobody's scoring in this one. It's 5-0, five, five minutes into the first quarter. Rock Springs still looking for their first point. Set Brunner to Hannah. Andrew oh. Hannah lost the handle. Stauffer picks up the loose change. Joey coming the other way for the Tigers. Feeds DeBoer. DeBoer lost the handle, but gets it back. Now gives it away. Set Brunner up to Carson Harlan. His layup, no good, but it's Stauffer oh. is going to get the foul there, and Harlan no, will go to the line. DeBoer is going to get that. Ooh. Maybe not. Maybe not. He was just mad. DeBoer oh, will. Stauffer, you were right. Nope. Stauffer with the foul. DeBoer just 
Well, DeBoer always looks like that. Yeah, I mean, I, like, he hit the wall, the tiger yeah. on the wall, and I thought maybe He's ooh, a it was very him. emotional guy. Harlan makes that, and Jackson now has a three from Seb, a two in the paint from Hannah, and one from the line from Harlan. That's it to take a 6-0 lead. His second is good. Carson Harlan converts both. Jackson up 7-0, another football score. Javon Newman with it. Bounce pass inside. Lionberger, turnaround 15-footer. No good. Oh. Rock Springs cannot make a basket right now. And a foul there. That's going to be on Noah Wiedner as he's into the game, the 6'4 senior. That's his first team fifth. Tigers have five fouls already. We're barely five minutes into the opening frame. Carson oh Harlan up ahead to Hannah, to Witherwright, to Seb Brunner. He drives the lane, Euro step. It feeds Hannah, what a beautiful oh, reverse layup. Andrew Hannah, and that, the feed was as pretty as the basket. Seb Brunner finding Hannah underneath. Gorgeous, and Andrew finish. He's got four now. Stoffer to Newman inside Lionberger. Nice move, and finally Rock Springs gets on the board. It's Sam Lionberger with the lay-in. A little bit of pressure here as DeBoer comes out to meet the Bronx, but they're across the line. Wide open Brunner kicks it to Keelan, picks up a double team. Back to Brunner. Now Keelan will try a three oh. off the back of the rim. No good. With a right reached over the back of Noah Wiedner. He'll pick up a foul. Second or third? Team third. And Will, Willis is second. 146 to go with the first. Jackson up 9 2 in. What is going to be one of the lower scoring first quarters in <laughs> Rock Springs history, maybe. DeBoer with it, floats one to Lionberger. He wasn't ready for it, but he picks it up. Sam Lionberger into Dalton Thomas. His shot no good. Partially blocked by Hannah, but he gets his own rebound and puts it up and in. 9-4. A little bit of pressure shown by the Tigers here, but Carson Harlan walks it across the line. Now to Witherite. Reach in by Thomas. Almost a foul. Keelan baseline three. Way off the mark. And offhand his hands. And Gavin Keelan, boy, when he misses, he misses. Baseline, not something he normally likes. That's usually A.J. Fowler's spot. Yeah. Now they're going to say that was off Rock Springs. Jackson get a break here. Seb Brunner to inbounds. Finds Gavin Keelan. Gavin puts a move on. Lionberger goes yes. right to the rack, and I like that. When the three is not there for Gavin, take the two. Go right down the paint, Keelan. Work it in. And Work he it did. In. DeBoer with it wide open. Thomas underneath feeds Lionberger. He runs into a host of Bronx and can't make the shot, but Stauffer picks up the rebound. Dalton Thomas will try. No good. And Thomas a little off the mark. Brunner with the ball now for Jackson. Down under a minute. Seth Brunner drives the right block. His shot, no. But he gets hit on the way there. The reach in is going to be on who? Newman, maybe? Yep. Javon Newman. His first, team sixth. As we're under a minute to go in the first. Jackson has led all the way. Oh. Seth Brunner missed that. Runner, a 65% free throw shooter. Seb doesn't miss very many from there. 50.8 seconds to go in the first. Jackson up 11 to four. Seb eyes the second one, takes his time, puts it up, too short, no good. Rebound, Lionberger. And here comes Javon Newman to DeBoer. Nice no-look pass to Thomas, but he lost the handle. Andrew oh. Hanna steals it. DeBoer reach in, out of bounds. That's off David DeBoer. DeBoer was worried he got a foul, and he tells Seb, I didn't mean to hit you if I did. <laughs> Keelan works it into Harlan. Jackson ball. They take their time now. Bronx have a lead on the road. No hurry. Gavin Keelan, pump fake. Trying to get Lionberger in the air. Now Harlan gets it into Hannah. Hannah puts a move on Thomas. Left-hander, oh. no good. Lionberger backdoor rebound. And it's Rock Springs ball with 20 seconds to go in the opening frame. Javon Newman with it. Near side the board. Jackson's 2-3 defense given Rock Springs fit so far. The Tigers just have not been able to buy a bucket. DeBoer, top of the key to Javon Newman. Down to seven seconds, six seconds. DeBoer back to Newman. Far side angle. Worked into Lionberger. Nobody wants to take the shot. Finally, Trenton Butcher will, and it's no, but he oh, got fouled. Oh, boy. Hold on. 
one. Fouled him. The cheerleaders have flooded onto the court, but I think we got some free throws coming here. Yeah, the refs say get back out of there. Hold on. <laughs> With no time left, it'll be Trenton Butcher to the line. The 6'3 senior, 46% free throw shooter, averages six a game. Off the back of the iron, no good. Nobody there in the blocks for either team as this will end the quarter. Butcher is front and center in the spotlight all alone. His second is in, and Rock Springs at least closes Ooh, he the must gap. Have been making a three. He gets oh, a third shot. Yeah, he's going to get three out of this. Well, well, mostly makes it two. eleven to five. His final free throw that'll rattle in and out. No good. So the first quarter ends. Jackson eleven, Rock Springs five. We'll be back with the second quarter. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ ninety five on the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Experience Jackson Hole like a local while staying at the Antler Inn, Elk Country Inn, Cowboy Village Resort, or 49er Inn and Suites. With the best entertainment, dining, shopping, bars, and brews all in walking distance, you'll never want to leave. Call 1-800-4-TETONS or find them on the web at townsquareinns.com. You're watching and listening to live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Sports on KZ95. Back here at Rock Springs after one in Jackson 11, Rock Springs five, and Coach Hayden Hatfield for the Bronx have done everything you wanted to do. Get off to a good start, take the crowd out of it, and force Rock Springs to try to shoot from outside with that 2-3 zone. Everything has worked Hatfield's it's, way so far. It has been working. Maybe the only thing you're nervous about is as good as it went for you in the first eight, you only have 11 points. Well, in a little bit, I gotta say, guys gotta work on those passes. That that would be the biggest negative I saw there. We, gotta we be had quite yeah. a few Especially Passes around. and we turned over the ball and couldn't, you can't score if you don't have the ball. DeBoer is a real steal guy. He leads the team in assists, steals, three. There's a poke ball right there. He is so good at that, David DeBoer. He poked it right away from Seth, but it went out of bounds. He has got quick hands. You got to be careful anytime you're near number two. Seth Brunner working on number two right now. Seth blows right by him, now pulls up in the lane, gives it to Carson Harlan. Harlan drives the lane kick out the Seb couldn't handle it cleanly or he might have just put the three up right there but he didn't yeah. bounce pass into Hannah wanted to give and go but Hannah just didn't see him open now feed Seb he'll try a pop shot 18 footer oh, no oh. good rebound Lionberger on the back side gives it to DeBoer he brings it up slowly just underway in the second Rock Springs down 11 to 5 but they have the ball there's Lionberger. He'll try a 15-footer. No good. Rebound Carson Harlan in there amongst the bigs. Pulls it down. <laughs> gives to Palmer Wetzel. Wetzel with it. Lionberger on him. Feeds oh. Seb Brunner. Gotta watch the Brunner's passes, got a man. little slippery hands here. That ball poked away from him. Stolen away. Coming the other way as Butcher lays it up and in. Trenton Butcher. And Kimmy, you pointed it out. Careless passing right now as that one turned into two the other way. AJ Fowler, his first action has it now. Gives to Palmer Wetzel. Back to AJ. Fowler working on DeBoer. Or rather, Brunner. Brunner now kicks it out to AJ. Fowler with Butcher on him. Back to Seb Brunner. Just a lot of work up high on the circuit. Brunner, Brunner gets Ooh, right by DeBoer yes. up and in. Seb Brunner showing quickness. It's not easy to get by number two, but he did blew right by him and put that layup up and in. DeBoer with it now for Rock Springs. 6.20 to go in the second. Far side, Butcher try a long three way off the mark. Sorry, that was oh. Kale Anderson. Out of bounds, and it'll be Rock Springs ball. They're going to say it was off Wetzel, well, I think. It was because he threw it at Wetzel. Oh, I didn't see yeah. that. <laughs> I was double he was checking to the save shooter. It, and it, it whacked Wetzel right in his gut. So Javon Newman, 5'10 junior, will trigger in. Looks for somebody open. Bounce pass inside to Lionberger. His shot, no. But the uh, guilty party, Palmer Wetzel, and that's the fourth, fifth team foul on Jackson. And to the line, Sam Lionberger. 75% free throw shooter, second, the third best on the team, and he has that one. To make it 13-8 now. 
Lionberger with his second on the way. That's good as well. And Rock Springs cuts the lead to four. Jackson with the ball. Seb Brunner. Watched by Javon Newman. DeBoer must be out of the game. He is sitting for a moment. Jackson has to take advantage of that. Seb Brunner working on Newman. Oh. Driving a lane, and I thought he drew a reach in. I think he did. Yeah, or push. Push, yeah. Push. Seventh team foul on Rock Springs. Javon Newman has two of those. DeBoer is going to come right back in and replace New Newman, who's got two. To the line, Brunner, as Rock Springs already with seven fouls to Jackson in the bonus. Carson Harlan checks out Isaac Larson in for him. Brunner to the line. Pretty good free throw shooter, 65%. He's one of two today. No, nah, I think he's... They're 0 for two. Now he's 0 for three. 0 for three, I yeah. think, today. That's not like... So Oops, sorry. Forgot to move the camera. Kale Anderson now. Far side, Newman will try, or DeBoer tries a long three. DeBoer has been cold shooting. And he is not a great shooter from the triple, as many things as he does well. He does not shoot great. Pump fake, Fowler gets it back to Brunner, works it inside to Hannah, but he's got Thomas on him. Is he going to try? Yes, and coming over to help is Lionberger, and he's going to get caught reaching in, I believe, and Hannah to the line. Eight fouls now. No, they're going to call that on Trenton Butcher. Hannah at the stripe has not had a great season, and that one off the back of the iron, no. Andrew Hanna, a 41% free throw shooter. With 5.35 to go, Jackson up just four. As well as they've played, that's not a big lead. Hanna does convert the back end, and it's 14-9. to nine. As DeBoer gets ready to trigger into Kale Anderson, rolls it to him. Anderson picks it up, and he's across the midcourt. DeBoer with it now, works it to Dalton Thomas, back to DeBoer, back to Thomas, in the Lionberger, cut the lane, but he fails to make the layup, and Gavin Keeler with a rebound to Brunner, wide open, Wetzel's three, that's uh. too short. Rebound is Kale Anderson for Rock Springs, and neither team shooting very well tonight. DeBoer with it now, top of the key, A.J. Fowler on him. Although it is that 2-3 zone, turnaround jumper from Lionberger. That's no good. And a reach-in foul there. It'll be Isaac Larson as Lionberger was scooping up his own rebound until Isaac Larson reached in and committed his second foul. Team sixth with five even to go in the half. This is going to be a really low-scoring game so far. DeBoer, bounce pass inside of Dalton Thomas up and in. That looked like a set play. And Thomas finished it, and Rock Springs within three now. Sepp Brunner working on DeBoer. Sepp behind the back dribble gets away from him, but only to pick up Thomas. A.J. Fowler with a three. Oh. That's too short. Rebound, Lionberger. And Wetzel's going to draw another oh, foul, I believe. Be third. Palmer Wetzel was battling Lionberger for the rebound. And that's Jackson's oh, second. seventh, okay. his second. Rock Springs with, well, that's to the line. Everybody going Everybody to the line, going now the line now for the rest. Yeah, Sam Lionberger to the line. He's two for two already tonight, and this one uh. is in. 14-12, a one-possession game with 442. Left in the second, Lionberger second. He's perfect in three tries from the charity stripe. No good. Rebound. Isaac Larson went high for that. Isaac brings it up, fires ahead to A.J., who was open momentarily. Fowler back to Larson. Larson, the left-hand dribble to Seb Brunner right here in the near angle. Got DeBoer on him, tries to wiggle away. Oh. Kick out to Palmer. Wetzel almost left too little on the pass. Now Keelan drives the lane. Go! and he might draw the end one. I think he did. He did. Gavin Keelan, I love him going to the cylinder. 
as Rock Springs is going to have their hands full with Hannah. The only guy they have to match up is Dalton Thomas at 6'4". So Keelan could sneak in there as the oh. other guy. Oh. His free throw no good, though. 16-12, 4.15 to go. Trenton Butcher with it now. Hands off to DeBoer. DeBoer drives baseline on oh. Wetzel. His shot won't go. Rebound. Lionberger. Oh, that's gonna that's be not Keelan. gonna fall either. And Gavin Keelan's gonna pick up the foul. Good defense on DeBoer. I don't know if David DeBoer has a point yet, as he is holding the left side of his head. He got knocked pretty good on that baseline drive. To the line is Lionberger, and this guy is automatic. Who is this kid? Told you about his sister playing in the girls' team. They must go out and shoot free throws in the in the driveway. <laughs> Lionberger's got all of them, as he is perfect from the line. Seth Brunner with it now. Just over four to go in the second quarter. Brunner kicks over to Keelan. Keelan with Thomas on him. That means who's on Hannah? Keelan drives. His shot no good. Hannah's on out there Hannah's right now. Hannah's out. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> Stoffer with it now for Rock Springs. Gives it to Trenton Butcher back to Stauffer. Stauffer directs traffic, wants somebody on the baseline. It's DeBoer. Now he waves another guy through. That's Butcher. DeBoer to Butcher. Bounce pass inside of Thomas. Kick out DeBoer. He'll try a long three. Seb comes out to challenge. Too short. Ooh. A rebound rock springs. Dalton Thomas up and in. And we are tied at 16. And as slow as Rock Springs started, we're back to even now. Seth Brunner with it now, 16 all, 3.15 to go with the first. Brunner drives a left block, and he's contacted by Stauffer and Thomas. And it's going to be Joey Stauffer who's going to get rung up here, I think. Uh, Hannah's getting ready to go back in. Seb will shoot two. Andrew getting ready to check back in, as you noted. And Brunner, who's not been very good tonight from the strike, will try. And he's got that. Breaks the tie. 17 16. Jackson by one. Hannah checks in for Wetzel. Jackson up one. Brunner will try to add to it. His second is good. He got a shooter's roll there. 18 16. Jackson up by a bucket. David DeBoer brings it across the line on the mismatched sneakers. Do they still call him sneakers? Butcher, bounce pass to Stauffer. Stauffer, bounce inside to Lineberger, stolen away. Set runner oh. in. Oh, he collided right away. I, I gotta go. I mean, that's when a hard Trenton charge. He, he did. He ran into him, but. Brunner yeah. never saw Butcher there. He was going after the loose ball. Next thing you know, he looked up and he ran right into yeah. the 6 3 senior and drew the charge. That'll be Brunner's first. Stolen away. Right. Gavin Kayla with a steal. Hands off to Seth Brunner. Jackson up two, and they have the ball. Brunner's wide open. He says, I'll try uh -huh. it. No good. Lionberger with a rebound way off the mark by Seb. And Jackson, there isn't a guy on the team now that feels comfortable shooting here. It doesn't look like. No. That ball out of bounds. Brunner knocked it into his own bench. I mean, neither side is shooting it great, but boy, the way Brunner and Keelan have missed threes have been way off. Kale Anderson with a now pitch and catch with Butcher. Now to DeBoer. Keelan right up on him. David DeBoer, nice behind the back pass to Lionberger oh. into Dalton Thomas. Good. Dalton Thomas is smooth as silk in the paint. He's really good. He put that up and in, a chance for an yep. and one. Hannah. As Hannah commits his first foul. Team 10, both teams with 10 fouls. And we still have two and a half to go in the half. Dalton Thomas trying to make it a three. Can't do it. Hannah with the board. Jackson ball. We're tied at 18. Gavin Keelan thought he was going to hand off to A.J. Now he'll pass it to him. A.J. around to Isaac Larson. Back to Keelan. Pump fake. Puts Butcher in the air. Drives the lane. Shot no good, but it's going to be Butcher who followed him all the way in. Keelan did a nice job to pump fake Butcher in the air. Trenton followed Keelan all the way to the hole and eventually did make contact. It'll send Gavin Keelan to the line. He's a pretty good free throw shooter. 53% on the season as he eyes this one and can't get it to go and right now there is 
Both cylinders on both ends are taped up. I don't know what's happening. He cannot get a shot to go. Keela is second. That won't go either. And Lionberger with a rebound for the Tigers. And this is painful to watch at times. Here's Dylan Thomas drives, knocks right into Andrew Hanna, but it's a charge. Andrew set his feet, took the charge, and that was a good thing because Thomas did make the shot. But Andrew Hanna, much to the chagrin of the hometown fans, drew the charge on Thomas. Uh -uh. That's his second. 2.08 to go in the half. Keelan will inbounds. Owen Patterson, the senior, checking in for Rock Springs. If he gets a chance, he does. He'll replace Thomas. And now Rock Springs going real small here and a chance to take advantage down low in the paint. As Noah Wiedner at 6'4 is the biggest guy the Tigers have out there. Seb Brunner kicks it over to Keelan inside of Hannah. That's a, exactly what the Bronx are going to do yeah. is get it inside, realizing that Thomas is sitting with two fouls. I mean, that's what you got to do. Patterson. easy. Patterson with it now. Watched by Seb Brunner Jackson in that 2 3 zone all afternoon so far. Far side, it's Kale Anderson. Watched by A.J. Fowler. Pass inside to Lionberger. Wide open three. Stoffer, no good. That's Patterson, sorry. No Ooh. good. Keelan with a rebound, a whistle, and it's a t jump ball or a reach in. They're going to say Kayla Anderson. They're going to say that was a foul. On the foul. Anderson can't believe it. And Rock Springs now with maybe 11. The score doesn't go higher than 10. No, for just fouls. goes up to 10, yes. And Rock Springs has got a bunch. Keelan to the line. He missed last time there. I mean, so. it counts on the players still. Yeah. Yeah. Statistically, Keelan should make this. As we're down to 92 seconds to go in the half, Keela does hit it. Jackson, this is going to be a war all the way to the end, you get a feeling. Three-point lead for Jackson. Hudson Conrad into the game for the first time, the 6'1 senior for the Tigers. As they try to work through their bench, Keela eyes it, fires it. His second one is in, and he makes them both. Jackson up now, 22-18. As Owen Patterson over to David DeBoer. DeBoer floats one to Lionberger. 16-footer off the back of the glass. No good. Isaac Larson there for the rebound. Jackson with the ball. Bronx bring it up. Seb Brunner. Nice dribbling clinic here as he works it. Far side elbow. Pump fake Larson to Brunner to Keelan. Thought about a three. No. Now he'll drive the lane. Before that happened, though, a whistle. And that might have been a way from the ball. That was a push on Keelan. Yeah. Well, these refs really are noticing everything. Notice some things I don't It'll notice. Be a really long game then if this happens like I this guess in a so. second. <laughs> 106 <laughs> left. Keelan to the line. He just hit a couple and he hits that. Whoosh. Gavin Keelan. So if that's how we're going to play this game, free throw shooting all night, you better be on your toes. Sep, we're looking right at you, who's yet to hit one. And Andrew, who's free throw challenged, although he's one for two tonight. Oh. Keelan missed that, and the rebound Owen Patterson for Rock Springs. Down to a minute in the second. Owen Patterson, the 5'10 senior, averages 2.8 a game. Gets it near side here to Hudson Conrad. Back to Patterson. Patterson in no hurry here. Seb Brunner watching him. Far side of the board. David DeBoer has been stone cold shooting. He'll try another three from that far angle. That's off the mark. And Andrew Henna sky high for the rebound. Up ahead, Jackson pushing the pace. Isaac Larson drives baseline, picks up too many people. And now DeBoer with a steal. Oh. David DeBoer with Gavin Keelan on him. Up and in. Gavin just really couldn't do anything there. And DeBoer, he's good at that. Turned a turnover into an instant two points for Rock Springs. Jackson up three, playing for a last shot. Set Brunner. He'll try a long three. Nobody came out to him. Bam! And he hits it. Seb Brunner makes it 26-20. Down to five seconds. DeBoer has the ball. He'll try a drive all by himself. Puts up the shot. No good. Out of bounds.
Jones, and that'll do it. The half ends. David DeBoer down on the ground, comes up limping. Isaac Larson offered oh. to help him up, and DeBoer said, no, thank you, and gets up himself, but he is favoring that right ankle, foot, something. Oh, he Keep an eye on David DeBoer. So after a half, it's Jackson 26, Rock Springs 20. We'll be right back with a halftime show on the home of the Bronx, Jackson Hole Radio Network. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, he, he throws it, and he caught it, and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes the dynamite. And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So, crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. The white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom, goes the dynamite. Oh, he's going to get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. And the dynamite does not go boom that time. Play-by-play play is hard. Uh... So is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. We're back here at halftime. Rock Springs in the heart of Sweetwater County. Jackson Bronx with a lead on the road, 26-20 over the Rock Springs Tigers. Just a reminder that the McPeak Group features a host of agents ready to serve you. Betsy Campbell, Des Jennings, Emily Figginshaw, Geraldine Ariola, Megan Murtaugh, and Brett McPeak comprise the McPeak Group at Jackson Hole Sotheby's International Realty. Together, all those agents I mentioned have over a half century of combined experience. Now that's going to help guide you through your real estate transaction. They've helped more than 250 of your friends and neighbors in such deals. Put people you know to work for you. McPeak Group. Back here at Rock Springs, it's been a fun game so far, Kimmy K. Although, boy, if you're a fan of scoring, you haven't had a bunch of it. No, I was going to say, I think we talked about what the score was going to be at the end of the game. I don't think either one of us are going to hit. Maybe. Even close. It's not over yet. We, All right, that's true. Yeah. But, yeah, certainly a low-scoring affair. Yeah. I don't know if we saw that coming. Now, is Rock Springs a little tired? They played last night right here. They beat... Green River, the final score of that game. I think they ended up beating them by Wait. 26. Uh, I final thought score they played six. Kelly Wall. Yeah. You said Green River. I was just checking. Oh. No, Kelly Walsh last night. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 66-48, the final there. Rock Springs defeating the Kelly Walsh Trojans, who the Jackson Bronx will see tomorrow afternoon, early afternoon game after the girls play in the morning. So uh, the Tigers a little tired of the, you wouldn't think they'd be tight at home, although this pretty good crowd here on a Friday night. Rock yeah. Springs usually very good at home, but boy, they've come out slow and maybe, just maybe, it's the X's and O's strategy of Coach Hayden Hatfield who said he was going to come out and play 2-3 zone for the first time this year and challenge Rock Springs to make shots. And so far his challenge has not been answered. Yeah, I was yes. gonna say it's looking really good on defense. It's a good choice on his part. Yeah, so far Hatfield's decision to play a zone has been right on the money because Rock Springs has not been able to shoot them out of it at all. Jackson has done a good job rebounding and blocking shots inside. Dalton Thomas has been the guy tonight so far. We talked about DeBoer and Thomas beyond the being the two Tigers you gotta watch. DeBoer kind of makes it all go. He's a threat from the arc, but boy, he has been stone cold shooting. Yeah. He's also a good steal guy and assist guy. And he's you certainly see that his level as of athleticism is 
just kind of beyond anybody on Rock Springs, with the exception of maybe of Dalton Thomas, the 6'4 senior, has been very good down low in the paint. And yeah. despite, I mean, if you're Thomas, you're 6'4, you're going up against 6'5 Keelan and 6'7 Hannah, and they're playing the zone. So those two guys are just sitting in the paint waiting for you if you're Thomas. And he's still been able to make hay down there. Yeah. He's really good at getting shots off in tight spaces. So maybe uh, halftime adjustments if your coach half the old day say, hey, the zone's working, boys. You guys are playing it perfectly. Right. We're going to go back and look at tape, and I'm going to show you exactly how well you play in the zone. It's working. So far, DeBoer has is, is not been a factor, but you can't imagine that's going to keep going in the final 16 minutes. I think you got to just keep making sure Thomas doesn't beat you down low and maybe identify ways of getting more offense generated. Right now, Jackson, a little yeah, stagnant man. on offense. Seb had an early three. Hannah's been good when they pounded inside of him. But, yeah, again, it's, it's just those two. Who's Who are the other guys for the Jackson Bronx? you got to find some other players who are going to be able to hit shots. Yeah. Have not seen Mac Fairbairn at all. Have not seen. Uh, yeah, when I think. I think only, I mean, uh, those points, it's low, but I think it's only Andrew Hanna, Gavin Keelan, and Sub Brunner who have points on the board. Yeah, and it, it looks like Coach Hatfield's willing to play one of those ugly kind of games. He's not worried about the backcourt. He's not, doesn't seem to be worried about scoring. When you play the 2-3 zone, it means you need to have three bigs down low. We know two of the bigs are going to be Hanna and Keelan, and he's shuffled in with a right along with Wetzel. So uh, the, the idea idea for Hannah or for Hatfield is to play big and yeah. challenge Rock Springs to shoot from outside and just try to outsize them. So the points are probably going to have to come from the low post and we're going to have to see more of Hannah, more of Keelan and maybe uh, something from Witherite and Wetzel off the bench down low in the paint. going to say but low scoring for sure at the half. It's Jackson 26, Rock Springs 20. The Bronx desperately need a win to get those two losses Whoa. out of their head and in the rearview mirror. And this game, as we talked about in the pregame, could be hugely important as we head to the postseason. We'll take one more break and we'll be back for the tap of the second half. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Jackson Lumber, the board store, Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building. So the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available with names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine and DeWalt. Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Grovemont. Call 733-6000, 733 Here's your voice of the Jackson Bronx, Jake Nichols on KC95. 
So, Jimmy K, I was taking note that the Bronx were out very early yeah. out of the locker room to come out and shoot a little bit. I don't think that's an indication they need to work on their shooting, although, you know, you I, always do. I, I think it means you don't need to adjust much no, if you're like coach What we're field. doing, like, yeah. hey, get back out there. What I we're doing is the, working. Let's go for it. Yeah, he went in the locker room. He said, everybody, you know, suck on an orange or whatever they eat there in the locker room. And then, you know, so far so good. You're playing a perfect road game. Game, keeping the crowd out of it 26 20 I mean it's not the prettiest thing but road games are often ugly yeah. like this and up six at the half and Rock Springs just has not been able to get shooting on track yes I think if you're coach Hatfield you're happy with the way things went and that's why you weren't in the locker room very long meanwhile on the other side of things Rock Springs coach Bill Rosette has got to find somebody who can put the basket and the ball in the basket. They have really struggled yeah. scoring wise. <clears throat> Thanks for dropping in with us this Friday night for basketball down here in Rock Springs on our YouTube channel, Jackson Old Radio. Don't forget to subscribe while you're there. Rock Springs with the ball to start the second half. It's Dalton Thomas kicking it out to. Anderson around the horn to DeBoer. DeBoer goes back top of the key to Javon. No, he doesn't. He bounced past inside. He's a tricky guy. There's Javon Newman. Newman, the junior. Far side Anderson. Kale Anderson works it inside. Thomas gives it back to Noah Weedner, uh, or Butcher rather, ripped out of his hands by Wetzel. Uh-oh, did Palmer pick up his no, third? No, jump ball. Okay, jump ball is Weedner, the 6'4 senior. Looks like Rosette's trying to match the size of Jackson by playing Weedner. He doesn't play a ton. He averages less than a point a game, but he's out there just to contend with the Bronx size. Keelan floats one into Hannah, kick out to Larson. The lefty tries a long three. Oh. That left it short. Gavin and Keelan with a nice oh. rebound, and that was not a good idea. The pass to Hannah is knocked away. Just a poor choice of pass there. Dalton Thomas up and in, and it's 26-22. Bronx have to be much more careful with the passing. Kimmy K, you said that back in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. Lots the passing. Wetzel with it now. Gives to Gavin Keelan. He'll try a long three, short. way short. Butcher oh. rebound, gives it to DeBoer. David DeBoer with a beautiful pass to Javon oh. Newman. His shot won't go, but Gavin Keelan, who came over to try to defend, is going to draw the foul. Newman to the line. Gavin second. And here go cool the whistles again. 6.45 to go in the third, just underway in the second half. Jackson with a six-point lead. They took into the locker room, now cut the Four. Javon Newman makes it three. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he bounced around. He couldn't quite get it. Newman will try again from the line. A 63% free throw shooter. The lefty eyes ah, this. He takes a long time. He looks down. I feel like I know him. I watched him do this all last night. He missed both. Hannah with a rebound. Seth Brunner with it. He wants Wetzel to cut along the baseline. He does. Brunner inside to Hannah. Oh, Hannah oh. lost the handle. Javon Newman stole it away. Newman going all by himself. Ural steps in the lane. Up and in. Javon Newman down the left block with a reverse lay-in. That's Seb Brunner's move right there. But Newman cuts the lead to two. Seb Brunner behind the back dribble trying to shake loose of DeBoer. Gives it back to Isaac Larson. Newman on him. Isaac can't find anybody to pass to. He's in trouble here. Gets it to Keela. Timeout. Hatfield as Isaac Larson took forever and a day to find somebody to pass to. And Hatfield said, I've seen enough at the four and a half second mark. He tees his hands together and says, I need a break. Yep. And save Larson right there. 6.06 to go in the third. We'll stay here. Both teams huddle it up. Jackson's 26-20 lead, now 26-24. And the Bronx all last year and the beginning of this year have trouble in the third, but they seem to have done better in second halves of late. Although they're yet to score here in the third with two minutes gone. 
Back out the floor, it's Larson, Brunner, Hannah, Keelan, and Wetzel for the Bronx. DeBoer, Newman, Thomas. And the other two have slipped my view here as Jackson with the ball. Seb Brunner kicks it out to Wetzel. Now to Gavin Keelan. Gavin will back up with a dribble. Butcher is the other guy out there for Rock Springs. Inside to oh, Hannah, up and in nice. on Dalton Thomas. Thomas, as good as he is inside, is just can't match up with Hannah's fart defensively. He's unable to block that shot. Good job by Hannah to get Jackson's first points of the second half. Kale Anderson works it inside a butcher. His shot, eight foot pop shot, no good. Rebound Dalton Thomas, and he was battling with Wetzel, and the whistle is on somebody. Ooh, Gavin Keelan, his I didn't third. see him in the mix. That's his third, yep. And I think fouls certainly could be an issue the way the whistles are going today. Kale Anderson's three, good, and Anderson has just pulled his Tigers to within one, 28-27. Rock Springs has never led in this one. It's been the Bronx all the way as Wetzel sets a pick for Brunner and now gets the ball himself, gives it back to Seb. Seb with DeBoer on him, floats one into Hannah. Thomas spun to the left side, shot won't go. Hannah's own rebound, no, loose ball. Kale Anderson has it. Hannah made a great move on Thomas, but couldn't finish. Thomas with a backdoor pass from DeBoer there, can't get the lay in to go, but he's fouled and that'll be Palmer Wetzel, his third, team third. Rock Springs does not have a foul yet in the second half. To the line is Thomas, 78% free throw shooter, best on the team, and he makes that one. And we are tied for the second time tonight. We were tied at 16, now we're tied at 28. Rock Springs, their first lead of the night as Thomas converts both. Seb Brunner, we'll see how the Bronx responds. Seb Brunner is touching his lips there. I don't know what kind of play that means. Oh. Ball poked away by DeBoer. He's so good at that. DeBoer puts it up. Shot won't go. Hannah with a rebound oh, to Seb Brunner. You've got to be careful on David DeBoer. He pokes another one loose. Oh. And it's going to be a palming the ball on Seb Brunner, who didn't think so. But David DeBoer's defense really is going to make for a nightmare night for Seb Brunner if he doesn't take care of that ball better. Javon Newman with a bounce pass into Butcher. Butcher kick out. DeBoer who feeds one over to Anderson. Kale Anderson back to DeBoer. He'll try a three. Rattles in and out. David DeBoer rebound Thomas. No good. Hannah with good defense on him. DeBoer oh. saves it for Rock Springs. Thomas bounce pass right to Andrew Hannah. Seb Brunner working on Javon Newman. Steps in and gets it. Oh what a shot from Seb Brunner as he Euro stepped down to the reverse layup and a timeout for Coach Hatfield as he wants to settle the troops. Jackson regains the lead, 30-29. And this one going to go right down to the end, I think. Pretty exciting contest. Uh, Jackson's got a feel very fortunate that David DeBoer, I don't believe, has any points tonight. He has not hit from three, I'll tell you that, and he usually is pretty good from the arc. DeBoer averages 15.7 points a game, and he has been very quiet tonight. That's been a big reason Rock Springs has just 29 points here in halfway through the third quarter. Anderson works it into Javon Newman. Rock Springs with the ball down one, 30-29. That pass is DeBoer almost tipped away by Brunner. David DeBoer back to Javon Newman. Inside mm -hmm. of Butcher, out to DeBoer. Thought about a three. Now he's going to try to work the lane. Inside, his shot no good. He oh. bumped into everybody there. Got his own rebound. Nice defense by Hannah, who stepped in to deny DeBoer. Oh. That pass to Hannah out of bounds. Seb, just not a good pass. We are not passing. Yeah, Sepp tried a long ball to Andrew Hanna. It was just too tall for him. And another turnover on a pass. 
Javon Newman with it now for Rock Springs. 3.40 to go in the third. Far side, Cale Anderson works at the Lionberger. Nobody near him, but he didn't take the shot. Newman back to Cale Anderson. He'll try a 15-footer in the lane. That's no good. And another whistle. Rock Springs does not have a foul yet in the second half. Jackson just picked up their fourth, and it's on Isaac Larson, his third. We'll see if, yeah, Coach is going to, Coach Hatfield going to send Carson Harland out for Isaac Larson as Cale Anderson has knotted this game at 30 with the first of two. Anderson from the line this year, 64% free throw shooter. And he's got that one as well. Rock Springs back in the lead and another lead change here in the third. Back and forth we go. Seb Brunner again goes to the mouth with the play. David DeBoer on him. Nice pick from Hannah. Seb drives the lane. His shot no good. Rebound Keelan. He got hacked. No call. Oh boy. And Rock Springs ball. DeBoer working on Harlan. Lost the handle. Good job by Carson Harlan to just stand there in DeBoer's way. And David DeBoer lost the handle. Oh. Seb Brunner with it now. DeBoer all over him, getting real handsy. Back to Keelan. Inside of Hannah. Got loose. That shot no good. Oh. Thomas with the block. Thomas says, I got all ball. The zebra says, no, you didn't. And that's the third on Dalton Thomas. And that's worrisome for Coach Bill Rosette. He's been your best player. Andrew Hanna to the line. The Tigers don't mind that statistically. And Andrew almost hurt the glass with that shot. Oh, I think he cracked it. <laughs> you think he cracked it? Like, cracked the window with that free throw. No good. So the next shot that goes in is going to like the whole Thomas, glass is going to yeah, crackle. Dalton Thomas does come out. Hudson Conrad in to replace him. The second from Hanna. That's no good either. And it's Trenton Butcher with a rebound. Javon Newman over to Anderson, back to Newman, into Butcher. Butcher in the lane, turns around, gives it back out to Javon Newman. Spinning, shooting, no, too short. Oh, yes. Rebound, Carson Harlan, bounce pass ahead for Seb Brunner, who caught up to it. Seb has it now. Far side, Keelan, wide open three. That's uh. off the mark. Hannah with a rebound. Down he goes. And it looked like he turned an ankle, but he's okay. No, nope, he's fine. I didn't see anybody contact Andrew Hannah, but apparently... Trenton Butcher did his third foul. And now replacements. Noah Weedner is back in. Joey Stoffer back in for Rock Springs. Replacing Javon Newman and Trenton Butcher. Jackson Ball, Seb Brunner will inbounds. Gets it to I, uh, Carson Harlan. Harlan walks it to the top of the key. Hands off to Willis Witherite. Back to Brunner. Brunner with Stoffer on him. Tries to get a pick from Witherite now. Directing traffic. Floats one into Hannah. Hannah working on Weedner. Shot no good. Rebound up with, oh. from Willis Witherite. That won't go either. And Rock Springs with the ball. Two chances inside for the Bronx. They couldn't make either of them go. DeBoer behind the back dribble on Brunner. Now settles things down to Stoffer, Top of the key. Cal Anderson. Anderson gives it to Lionberger. Doesn't want to shoot. DeBoer, three. That's off the mark. David DeBoer not feeling it from the arc at all. That ball oh. out of bounds. Are they going to say off Keelan? And he doesn't like the call. Rock Springs will get another chance here. And the one thing you can't do in the 2-3 defense is give rebounds up. There should be no excuse for giving up rebounds in the 2-3. Keelan comes out. And we get our first look at Mac Fairbairn. Fairbairn almost steals that from Anderson, but does not. Stoffer now. He'll try a little 12-foot shot. And Fairbairn's out there for five seconds, has already committed a foul as he got a piece of Stoffer who is slow to get up. I think he whacked him in the head. That's what the right looked like yeah. he did. <laughs> Joey Stoffer, statistically second best free throw shooter on the team at 76%, and a chance to add to the one-point Tiger lead. And he does. This is the first one with a friendly roll. 32-30. Rock Springs in the lead with 146 to go in the third. Jackson has scored just four points this entire quarter so far. Stoffer gets them both. And it's the biggest lead for Rock Springs with a timeout on the floor. We'll go as well. The Tigers 33, the Bronx 30. 
You're enjoying Bronx basketball in the home of the Jackson Bronx, KZ95 and the Jackson Hole Radio Network. At High Country Linens Paper and Cleaning Supply Outlet, we've got you covered. We have clean. Back to the action. Jackson basketball down three with a buck and a half to go here in the third quarter. Andrew Hanna inside. He picks up a triple team. Kicks it out to Fowler. Now to Harlan. Harlan works it cross court to Seb Brunner. And Brunner, does he get a travel there? What did he do? Step outside? I don't oh, know. Boy, I didn't see that either. Good news for the Bronx. Uh, you've given a blueprint on how to beat the Rock Springs Tigers to the rest of the conference. Play a zone and challenge them to shoot. Bad news for the Jackson Bronx. They have not been able to score at all here in the third and really all game. Joey Stauffer with it now for Rock Springs. Inside a Lionberger. Sam Lionberger gets turned around. That shot up, no good. Rebound with a right. Willis with a right feeds far side to Carson Harlan. Harlan drives the right block, pulls up, kicks out. Seb Brunner, long three, top of the key, uh -huh. way off. And with a right with a rebound, Jackson gets another chance. Seb, after that first three of the game, has been stone cold as much as David DeBoer has. Carson Harlan will try a baseline uh -huh. jumper. That's no good. With a right, battling Lionberger for the rebound, but it's Sam Lionberger for Rock Springs. David DeBoer drives oh. the lane. His shot, no good. Scramble for the rebound. With a right, has it. Travel on Willis. Witherite, I believe. He puts his hands on his head, can't believe it. And I'm telling you, neither team is making much in shots. If no. This game has been ugly at times. I mean, 30 seconds left in the third, and we're only at 30. 33 30, bounce pass into Lionberger. His shot up. That layup oh. won't go. Rebound, no. Three, two, three tries at it for Lionberger. Couldn't make any of them. Jackson ball. Carson Harlan with it now. 15 seconds. Harlan to with a right. He'll try a long three top of the key. Uh -oh. Way off the mark. And Lionberger with it now. Rock Springs. Last shot here to end the third. Six seconds. Five. Patterson gives it near side of Stauffenberg. Stauffenberg working on E.J. Fowler. His shot. Go! Joey Stauffenberg puts an exclamation point in it. And at the end of three, it's Rock Springs 35, Jackson 30. We'll be right back with a fresh eight minutes on the board after this from our sponsors. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on Jackson Hole Radio Network. Experience Jackson Hole like a local. Recently renovated, the 49er boasts a new lobby, extended continental breakfast, indoor swimming pool, fitness facility, and 12-person outdoor hot tub. Located on Pearl Street, the 49er is just three short blocks from Jackson's greatest bars and restaurants, where you'll find your home away from home. Enjoy your time in Jackson as part of the town square ends, and stay at the 49er Inn and Suites. This is KZ95 with live coverage of the Jackson Bronx. Ready to begin the fourth quarter. That was a dreadful third quarter for the Bronx, scoring just four points. They came out of the half with a 26-20 lead. They've been outscored in the third 15 to 4. And again, third quarters just not going well for Jackson. Rock Springs ball, they lead their biggest lead of the night. Tigers, Stoffer has it. Bounce pass inside a Lionberger. Five point lead for these Tigers. Stoffenberger. Stoffer oh. to Javon Newman. Inside to 
Oh, Stauffer, who just tried, he just wanted to get rid of that ball. Here's Lionberger up and in. Sam Lionberger makes it 37-30. Jackson needs a basket somehow, some way. Brunner into Hannah. Hannah double team loses the handle, oh. stolen away. It's Butcher with it now. Trenton Butcher. Hannah can't do everything, and every time he gets his hands on the ball, there's a couple rock springs on him, if not three. Stauffer far side, inside a lot. Dalton well, Thomas, travel, travel. Thomas passed to Lionberger. His shot no good. Rebound Thomas. He can't get it to go either, but he'll go to the line. And I think that's Keelan again. No, I think this was on Hannah. Okay. 7.02 to go. Thomas, a very good free throw shooter, the best on the team at 78%. And he's been money tonight. He's got that. 38-30. Rock Springs in the lead. This one slipping away from Jackson. They have got to reach down deep. Gut check here for the Bronx as Thomas makes them both. Nine-point lead for Rock Springs at home. Seb Brunner with it now. Hands off to Gavin Keelan. Pump fake. Now drives the lane on Butcher. Puts it up and in. Gavin Keelan with a good job schooling Trenton Butcher as he took him to the rack and put it up and in. Keelan's been able to do that tonight. Seb Brunner reach in there. Almost stole it away from Javon Newman, but not quite. Out of bounds off his hands. Rock Springs ball. 6.40 to go in the final frame. Javon Newman with it for Rock Springs. Working on Brunner to Butcher to Stauffer baseline inside a lion or to Dalton Thomas. His shot is too short oh. and Hannah well I thought they were going to whistle Andrew but he played good oh. defense there. Yeah I thought so too. I was a little worried there. I was like I didn't think that was a foul. So foul on you. Stauffer his third and he's going to come out now for DeBoer. 39-32 seven point lead for Rock Springs. Jackson with 16 fouls of the second half. Tigers with three. Gavin Keelan fresh off that drive down the lane. Now Brunner's going to try it. Pop shot, 12-footer, two short. Brunner trying for his own rebound, but can't get it. Lionberger comes up with it. David DeBoer driving the baseline. Kicks it out to Thomas, but that went off his hands out of bounds. They're going to say Keelan touched it last. And DeBoer will inbounds for Rock Springs. 6-11 to go in the fourth. Rock Springs have pushed a seven point lead here their biggest of the night Dalton Thomas wide open baseline three good and Dalton Thomas has been the best Tiger all night on the floor just hit a big three for Rock Springs Set Broner he's in trouble triggers into Hannah Hannah got Thomas on him to AJ uh -huh. step back three no he doesn't take it Gavin Keelan thought about it as well. Drives on Butcher. His shot off the mark. And that could have been a charge on Keelan. He leaned into Butcher. Or, yeah, and I thought he was going to draw a charge, but Butcher picks up his fourth. The 6'3 senior has been vital for the Rock Springs team, defensively at least. Replaced by Kale Anderson, the 5'11 sophomore. Jackson ball down seven, down 10, sorry. After that, Dalton Thomas, three. Keelan, pump fake, drives the lane. Dalton Thomas comes over to reject. Here comes the other way. DeBoer up and in. Oh, boy. Dalton Thomas with a block on him, one end. And DeBoer with the lay-in on the other. Set Brunner with it now for Jackson. Bounce pass. That's off the foot of Thomas. And they might be calling a kick there. I don't know what it is. 44-32, a 12-point lead from Rock Springs. Suddenly, this Tiger team that couldn't buy one in the first half has been starting to come to life. Hannah, kick out to Keelan. Pump fake. Nope. They're going to hand it off to Wetzel. Palmer Wetzel floats one. No, you're going to fire it. That's off ah. the back of the iron. No good. Rebound Dalton Thomas to DeBoer. He's going to slow things down here. With just over five to go, Rock Springs not in a hurry. DeVore blows right by Brunner. Now a kick out to Kale Anderson with Keelan on him. Bounce pass to Dalton Thomas and a timeout here on the floor called by Rock Springs coach, I believe, right? Yep. Full timeout, Rock Springs. Bill Rosette makes the call. So with 4.57 to go, timeout on the floor. Tigers 44, Bronx 32. Coming right back 
with more Bronx basketball on Jackson Hole Radio Network. Jackson Lumber, the board store, Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available, with names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine, and DeWalt. Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Grovant. Call 733-6000, 733-6000. This is KC95 with live coverage of the Jackson Bronx. Well, as in control of the game as Jackson was in the first half, they've watched things slip away here the second. Still now, plenty of time to get a little they're down double digits, 12. Fire underneath them. 44-32, Jackson down, and it's Rock Springs ball. DeBoer looking to inbounds, bounce pass Ooh. into Lionberger. Nice block by Gavin Keelan. Jackson ball as Seb Brunner comes up with a rebound. Brunner pushes it to Keelan. Got Sam Lionberger on him. Seb Brunner has had a real tough night with this guy. Oh. DeBoer reached in and knocked it away again. It's going to be out of bounds on DeBoer, but he's just made life for Seb miserable, and Seb's just shaking his head like, what did I do to deserve number two? It's a good matchup, though, if you're Rock Springs coach. Put DeBoer on Seb Brunner. DeBoer is just hands everywhere. Seb, little pop shot, 15-footer, no good. Gets his own rebound. Kick out Fowler, step back three. That won't make it either, and Thomas pulls down the board. And the Bronx cannot get anything to go in here on the fourth. I thought the third was bad for him. But the fourth quarter, not too good. DeBoer to Kale Anderson. Isaac Larson watching him. Anderson. Passes over to Javon Newman. He's going to back out of there and oh. gives it to DeBoer. And DeBoer's in no hurry. Backs it right out top of the key. David DeBoer oh. puts on a dribbling clinic. Runs into Fowler. Now comes all the way back out here with Isaac Larson on him. Jackson has switched now to a man defense as they have got to force the oh. issue. And Keelan gets a reach in there on the arm. Is that his fourth? It yeah. is. Jackson's seventh, Keelan's fourth, and Hatfield's got him in the man-to-man. -man. They're trying to force the issue. Rock Springs simply won't shoot if you stay in that 2-3 zone. To the line is their best free throw shooter tonight, Sam Lionberger. Has he missed one yet? He's got that. 45-32, under four minutes to go. And Honey, you forgot to take off the ad again. Sorry. The Bronx watching this one start to trickle away here. The second shot missed by Lionberger. Finally, Keelan with it now for the Bronx. Gavin hands off to Seb Brunner. Seb working on DeBoer again. Triggers into Hannah, and that's oh. Dalton Thomas with the block. Dalton Thomas giving away three inches, but we talked about it in the pregame. I said that guy plays big. He plays bigger than 6'4", and he blocked Andrew Hanna. Not many guys can do that. Thomas with it now. Hands off to Javon Newman. A.J. Fowler watching him. New Newman wriggles free, oh. drives the lane, and that could have been Keelan or Isaac Larson. They better hope it's Larson. It is. As Javon Newman right down the left block, and he ran into a host of Bronx, got sandwiched in there, and he draws the foul. Eighth foul on Jackson, fourth on Larson. Newman, the lefty, puts the first one in, and we talked about free throws possibly being big down the stretch, and Rock Springs has made theirs. Second one coming up from Newman as DeBoer and Kale Anderson have some fun in the backcourt. He missed that. Rebound, Hannah to Seb Brunner. Seb drives, looking for a bounce pass to Hannah. Beautiful pass up and in. Andrew Hannah finished. Thomas came over, but too late, and Andrew puts it in. DeBoer has got a two-on-one to Thomas. Back to DeBoer, tips it, can't get it to go. That was pretty. 
highlight reel kind of stuff, but the finish wasn't there. Here's Seb Brunner, spin move in the lane. Over to AJ, puts a stutter step on Newman. Now back out to Keelan. You just don't have time to do this kind of stuff. You got to shoot. Brunner does, oh, and he can't get it to go. Rebound that. Rebound Javon Newman. 242 to go in regulation. And it's a 12-point Rock Springs lead. David DeBoer with it now. Seb Brunner on him. They've gone man-to-man, -man, the Bronx have, to try to force something. Lionberger and Hannah crawls right over the back of him. But wait. What's the whistle there? They didn't get Hannah. Bounce. Okay. Oh, we'll out. take that. Butcher replaces Lionberger for Rock Springs. Two and a half minutes to go. Jackson down 12 still. Seb Brunner with it now. Bronx are going to have to catch fire fast. Oh. Brunner got a screen from Keelan, but almost fell down. Couldn't make use of it. Hannah working on Dalton Thomas. That hasn't been easy for Andrew. Back out to Seb Brunner. He gets a screen from Hannah. Can't make use of it. Now passes to A.J. Fowler. Fowler watched closely by Javon Newman. A.J. pulls up his dribble. Gives back to Seb Brunner. DeBoer sweeping at him. Nice pass to Andrew Hannah from Seb Brunner. That was nice, finding Hannah on the back door. At a timeout, Hatfield's just trying to keep his kids fresh now. As or maybe that was Rosetta called it. But uh, I think it was Bronx. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, they Hatfield have to keep those same five guys fresh right now and just give them a breather if the Bronx are going to get back into this. It's a 10-point game. Rock Springs ball with two minutes to go in the fourth. We'll stay here. Jackson had led all the way, took a 26-20 lead into the locker room at the half. We noted that it was very low scoring. Rock Springs just hadn't been making their shots. How long could you expect that to last? Not, I guess not very long. Jackson came out at a dreadful third quarter, outscored in the third 15 to four, and Rock Springs has just put the pedal to the metal ever since. With a 46-36 lead, Jackson has scored 10 points the entire second half. This is nothing short of a meltdown. Jackson full court pressure, broken easily. David DeBoer up and puts it in. He thought about jamming, but he decided to just kind of lay it in the cylinder, and it's back to a 12-point lead for the Tigers. Seb Brunner, DeBoer all over, ha hassling him. Feed into Hannah, reverse lay in. Good, Thomas with a foul, and it's a chance for an and three, and Thomas didn't think so. But that's that his fourth? fourth. Yeah, I think it is. Fourth. Team fourth, uh, team fifth. Thomas is fourth. Hannah to the line of a chance to make it a three-point play. Jackson down 10, uh -huh. and he can't get it. Rebound, Javon Newman. Newman with A.J. Fowler on him. Jackson's going to have to start thinking about fouling people. Newman gives it to Kale Anderson. Anderson trying to draw Hannah out to the perimeter. Can't do it. Anderson hands off to DeBoer. Timeout. That's Rock Springs this time. And what are you going to talk over here with a minute 27? Strategy is going to be ha you're going to have to foul. For Jackson, you do have eight fouls. So fouls will send the Rock Springs Tigers to the line. The trouble is they're a very good free throw shooting team. Stauffer, 76%. DeBoer, 70 Thomas, 78% free throw shooter. And Sam Lionberger, who is not in there right now, is 75% free throw shooter. Javon Newman's not bad either at 63. Cal Anderson, 64. They all shoot from the line very well. So if you want to play free throw game with these guys, you're living dangerously. Rock Springs has been pretty good down the line at the strike. Cal Anderson triggers in here in the backcourt to David DeBoer. He's got Isaac Larson on him. DeBoer bumped, and there's the foul. I'm not sure Larson was trying to do it on purpose, but he certainly didn't mind making contact. Uh, that's, he's done. And Larson has fouled out. Carson Harlan will come in for him. DeBoer, not a bad guy to put in the line. He makes seven of every ten he throws from here, but he, boy, he just hasn't been good tonight. Not as good as David DeBoer usually is. So maybe the thinking is here, it's not DeBoer's night, although he makes that, just as I say that. David DeBoer makes it an 11-point game, 49-38. There's a minute 22. Time is the enemy of the Bronx now. 
DeBoer pantomiming the shot before he gets the ball. Now the real throw is rolls in and out. No good. Rebound saved oh. by Lion or by Butcher rather. And Rock Springs will get another look at it. What a play by Trenton Butcher to keep it alive. DeBoer with it now. Seb wants to follow him in the worst way and finally does. I don't know what Seb's mad about. You've got to do it, kid. There's just no time to watch David DeBoer dribble oh. and dribble and dribble. I, because I think he got it clean. I don't think it. I thought it was a foul. And oh. he's going to get teed up to go with it. Seb is upset about the call. He didn't do much, but it was enough, and that's going to give DeBoer a bunch of throws here with a minute eight and a chance to ice it as. I mean, Seth Brunner had to foul. You've got to know that. Don't worry about picking up your third. You've got to send Rock Springs to the line. There's just no time. David DeBoer makes that, and it's a 50-38 game. DeBoer yeah. will try another one. He's shooting the technicals now, and he made them both. So Seb's outburst costly, two points wise. And DeBoer will now throw the free throws. Or maybe he gets three technically. He's still there at the line. Nobody in the blocks for either team. And DeBoer is three for three with those. And is he still? I don't know. I don't really know high school rules. I don't know how many you get, but there's his fourth, and he's made them all. All four, and that will all but ice it. He makes four free throws to give Rock Springs their biggest lead of the night. They still have the ball. The four, and he jammed right over the top of Kevin Keelan. David DeBoer is putting an exclamation point on this one for the Tigers as he went right to the wreck and jammed it in over the top of Gavin Keelan. Oh boy. And a foul here on Rock Springs. That's going to be on David DeBoer, his second. Team six to the line is Seb Runner. And in the matchup of backcourt, it's been Brunner and DeBoer, the two point guards that run their team. DeBoer has been super quiet from the arc, but that's about it. He's been very active in the game. Seb hit a three early and has been Not very quiet since. I Seb with it now. It was on the floor. Brunner gives it to Gavin Keelan. Keela with 48 seconds. Keela looking for a pass here. Nobody helping. Now hits Sepp Brunner. Brunner, he'll try a long three. That's off the front of the iron. Short rebound. Trenton Butcher. Rock Springs ball with 35 seconds. See if Fowler wants to foul. It's just not worth it now. This one's over. DeBoer with it. Seb Brunner gets picked off from Butcher, but picks DeBoer back up. David DeBoer is just... I doubt he's going to shoot. Gives it to Javon Neiman. Newman, rather. Newman spins and falls and draws the foul from Seb Brunner. The block and Seb is... Seb is ready to get on the bus and go to Casper right now. That's his fourth. 20 seconds to go, and Jackson has let one slip away here in Rock Springs. To the line is Javon Newman, the lefty. The junior looks things over. His free throw, no good. 20.6 seconds. Sam Lionberger back in. Jackson's half field makes change. Owen Kana gets his first chance at playing some basketball as Seb Brenner checks out. Javon Newman, his second from the line. Disappointing night for the Bronx, who will lose their third straight as Newman makes that. And it's 56 38. Rock Springs, Jackson ball. Keelan will inbounds to Owen Kana. Owen brings it over the line, watched by Joey Stoffer. Kana pulls up his dribble, kicks it out to Keelan. Keelan gets away from Lionberger momentarily to Kana to Fowler. AJ trying to work on Owen Patterson, passes inside to Hannah, whipped out wide open. Kana, his three point mm -hmm. shot is off the mark, and that'll do it. Oh boy. 
The offensive output in the second half of the Bronx nearly non-existent and a disappointing loss for the black and orange tonight as the other orange team, the Rock Springs Tigers, are able to hold home court advantage for Rock Springs. It's their fourth straight win. They improve their record to 10 and 7, 3 and 1 in conference. For the Jackson Bronx, their third straight loss. They're now 10 and 6 on the season overall, 3 and 3 in conference. Still 3 and 0 in quadrant, though. That's important. What a game that got away from Jackson, that's for sure. We'll be back to wrap things up with a post-game show right after these. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KC95, the Jackson Hall Radio Network. He goes across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, he, he throws it, and he caught it, and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes it out. And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So, crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. White team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. Hand shoots, and boom, goes it out. Oh, he's going to get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. And dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. Back to wrap things up here at Rock Springs. That didn't go the way we planned it. Uh, not at all. A very good first half for the Jackson Bronx. I hope that's not lost in the effort. They were really good for the first half. They played a great road game. The 2-3 zone gave Rock Springs fits. And at the half, they led 26-20. Very low-scoring game, but... Did I not worry about the lack of scoring from the Bronx? I yeah. mean, 26-20 after a half, I thought, boy, yep. I just don't like their offense. Seems kind of stagnant. Now, granted, we it was setting up to be kind of one of those ugly games. And if you were going to win, and, and, and if you were Jackson, you were going to win ugly. It wasn't going to be a night where you were going to shoot lights out for either team. Mm -hmm. But in the second half, it was Rock Springs that came to life. That third quarter was just uh, disastrous for the Jackson Bronx as they scored just four points in the third while Rock Springs scored 15. In fact, Jackson in the entire second half scored just 12 to finish behind the Rock Springs Tigers. 56-38 the final here and what do you got for scoring wise? You want to start with Rock Springs? Sure. Stauffer had four. Um, we've got DeBoer had 13. Um, yeah, that was a hard-earned 13. I don't know if he had a three, did he? I don't think he made a three nope, all night. Not. And he is their three-ball guy. Okay. Uh, Thomas had 17. Yeah, Dalton Thomas led all Tigers. He was really good. Who else? Um, Anderson had five. Kale Anderson with five, the 5'11 sophomore. Newman had four. Javon Newman averages about seven a game, so four, a little under the mark for him, but he had a good game. Butcher, three. Okay. And Lindbergh, um, two, four, six, eight, ten. Sam Lionberger, who Lionberg. doesn't normally start, had a great game off the bench. Uh, yeah, let's give our uh, favorite player for Rock Springs the MVP for the Tigers. What do you think? Uh. Oh, come on, this one's easy. 
I kind of like Thomas, but I know you're thinking DeBoer. No. You were thinking Thomas. I think of DeBoer did not have anywhere near the game he's usually getting. Okay, well, I was thinking gets. Thomas. Thomas. Okay, that's uh, mine, Thomas. Besides leading England scoring, Thomas Epi. averages th uh, 13 a game, and you say he had 17 to lead all Tigers. 17, and the way he was and he blocking had to, those he shots had, uh, at the end. He also rebounds. had to play defense on Andrew Hanna. Yeah. Uh, not that he negated Hanna at all, but he, he controlled Andrew Hanna despite giving away three inches. Yeah, I thought Dalton Thomas was the best Rock Spring player on the floor. How the Jackson Bronx stack up? Well, I can't tell if this is a point or not for Seb, but um, Seb either had Seb had twelve. Harlan. Two. Boy, I don't. I don't remember many of Seb's twelve. He did have two threes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Harlan, I just said two. Hannah had two fours. Six, Fifteen. Yeah. Uh, Keelan. Seven, and that's it. Oh boy. So again, as we told it, it was Seb, Keelan, and Hannah with just a little help in the first All right, from you, Harlan. What do you like best from the Bronx tonight? I gotta go Seb. I'm gonna go Seb too because he, he had he to had bore a, on him all game. He did, and I love even at the end he was. You could tell that frustration. Yeah. And he held it. In. I, I I didn't. I did not think Seb? he deserved a technical at that point, but um, well, that's that's beyond the point. The point. Yeah, yeah, that's beyond the point. Seb missed a lot of shots, oh. but he at least is out there trying yeah. them. And you know, every point that Hannah scored, I think, or eighty percent of the points uh, Hannah scored, the were feed by was Seb. from Seb, yeah. and they were beauties. Absolutely. So Seb having to deal with a headache called David DeBoer all night, and still managing to score somehow double digits. I don't even know how because he missed a ton of shots. But he also fed Hannah most of his stuff. Yeah, yeah Seb, Seb had, had the, the game for the Bronx. And it was a tough game. It's not one that if we told Seb now we, he's the MVP of the game, he'd be like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, not, he was not happy with the game tonight. And I know Coach Hatfield isn't happy with the results. They let another one get away. And that's a long bus ride to Casper thinking about this one and having to face the Trojans tomorrow. Eesh, but we'll have that game for you. We'll be on the air with it um, tomorrow at, I don't even know when. It's off, early in the morning. I think it's like, like 11. 11.30 is girls. All right, I think, yeah. I we'll think that sounds about right. I could we'll, be off a half yeah. hour, hour or something. We'll see you 11-ish, let's say, and we'll wrap things up here from Rock Springs in the heart of Sweetwater County. This one, once again, not going the Bronx way. Rock Springs, 56. Jackson, 38. That's the final here in all the action brought to you by our friends. Don't forget to visit our sponsors, Town Square Inns of Jackson Hole. That's the Antler Inn, Elk Country Inn, Cowboy Village Resort, and the 49er Inn and Suites. The McPeak Group, Jackson Hole's premier real estate team at Sotheby's International Realty. Jackson Lumber, Jackson's original board store, and Young Life at Jackson Hole. Young Life, they're all about teenagers. For Jackson Old Radio, I'm Jake Nichols alongside Kimmy K, and we'll see you again tomorrow, but we'll wish you and yours good night from Rock Springs, Wyoming.